then we will go ahead and get started. Uh, yeah, Nazim, that's the that's the cloak. Um, the I already put so I put all the items in there from from last week. You guys will have you know your inventory updated from those. Um, again, the things that you have that require attunement though are not attuned yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so attunement. Sorry for the uh, stupidity here. No good. This uh, particular cloak uh, attunement is is determined by what? Uh, so, well, uh, you can have three items attuned at any given time, uh, and how you do that is by uh, spending a short rest, uh, sitting with the item, essentially, you know, getting attuned to yourself. It can't just be traded to anyone else. In that, mm -hmm. if you you can hand it to somebody else, but they won't get the. Uh, the the impact of the you know required yeah. attunement parts. It's basically like a uh, like you're trying to get used to a new pair of shoes. I like to think of it like as you're like like trying them out, like you're like wearing them and like running around in it and like flapping the cloak around and figuring all the cool shit out. Gotcha. It takes right. you some time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so where we left off, uh, everybody is still in Gamefoot's shop. Uh, outside of Eiffelstead, actually, Pogo and Norok are outside. Norok is still in uh, dog form at the moment. Um, Gamefoot has kind of finished handing over all of the goods to you guys. And again, those two stacks of golden bars that he was separating as you guys were purchasing things. Now everything is in the his pile, essentially. Uh, he's passed out the the gold coinage for the you know the remainder of the gems and, and uh, kind of odds and ends that you sold uh, back to him. Uh, so he's passed out all the gold. Uh, and standing there kind of expectantly, uh, what else, uh, what else can I do for you then? Is this, does this finish your transactions? Anything else you need to buy while you're here? Christ, that's a fine looking coat there. Or am he, I still outside? I'm still outside? Oh yeah, you're outside <laughs> with, uh, with no, okay, cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Out walking in the rain. I'll just say I, I peeked around the corner and threw my gold bars in and then went back <laughs> out with the dog. Okay. I think that's everything. Um, could you just not tell my mom that we stop by? That'd be great. There is a uh, questioning, nearly suspicious kind of a, a flash across his features. Um, and he kind of squints a little bit, and then he just nods. I, I, I think I can do that. I mean, you sure. uh, you two not getting along so well? Not at the moment. We already stopped by and said hi. I just don't want her to know that I stuck around for any point in time. All right. Fair enough. Far be it for me to put one of my customers out. Even right. ones that weren't invited. And he kind of scowls a little bit at Artemis. Sorry about that. <laughs> we'll get out of your hair. All right. Well, try to keep out of the rain as much as you can. It's it's coming down pretty heavy out there. Does uh, I'm gonna telepathically while I'm walking uh, Norok around, um, see what <laughs> walking uh, Norok around. see what see if Peter Griffin sees anything interesting or looks dangerous between us and where the city the town is. Uh, roll me a. Do you have the stat block for Peter up? Ooh, I can. I'm gonna ask that. I'm it's just gonna give the shopkeeper a small nod, put my hood back up, and head know. out. Okay. All right. Uh, perception. I just changed the Griffin's name to Peter in the mm -hmm. stats. Was easier to find for you. Sweet. <clears throat> All right. Um, he replies while you're while you're out uh, in a you know kind of screechy voice. They're everywhere inside. I, I can't really go more than you know. I, I can't get close to the city without them, uh, you know, being all over the place. And I'm afraid if I fly too low, they'll they'll spot me. But they're pretty much everywhere in the city. Okay. Thanks, bro. <laughs> So I have a question. Where exactly do we need to go for Noroxing? Is that northwest? No, it's southwest. Southwest. Yeah. So here, I'll bring the... Um, actually, I'll just share it to you guys real quick. If you go to the maps um, section, so you go to the journal entries in the top bar, which looks like a book, like an open book, go there, and then you should have a green section labeled maps. Everybody see that? Yeah, uh, and then uh, Caldeodorin. Caldeodorin C. Yeah, Caldeodorin C. Uh, okay. So on that map, if you guys look at the kind of middle part, it actually says pale, but the map is covering part of it, kind of near the center. 
uh, that's the area that you guys are in. So if you look at the you know the the place that you guys are standing at, basically on the world map uh, versus Pale, uh, that's where you're at. Is near Eiffelstead in the center, uh, where the Antaros tribe is to the southwest, and that's where Norok needs to go. When we get outside, we'll find Pogo and Norok. Okay. All right. Then uh, Gamefoot opens the door for you. Uh, kind of ushers you out, closes it behind you. Uh, if you happen to come across any more gold bars, I mean, you, you just, um, you come on back, okay? If we come across anything interesting, we'll come back. Looking forward to it. Then he closes the door. Nice meeting you! <laughs> he gives you kind of a half wave and then notices the dog again and hurries the door shut. <laughs> Christ, how long is this spell going to last? Is it just going to be like this forever? No, it should drop here pretty soon, I would think. Like five minutes, probably. Because we've been in there for about an hour, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, here pretty soon. Uh, speaking of which, we need to get the hell out of this town. Because my mother is not going to wait to tell them that I'm here. No, I, I mean, uh, I yeah, mean, I was going to say that town is pretty much flush with those, you know, priest guys. The warrior priests, I suppose, whatever they call themselves. The well, Jutherans. Since we sold all of our stuff and we got what we needed for supplies, there isn't really a reason to go to town. So I mean, I'm fine. How much? Uh, how much extra gold is there for everyone? Give me gold. Uh, <laughs> this, this is all <laughs> that's left. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's it. there's so much gold. <laughs> um, what happened to it? Where did it all go? <laughs> we bought some really cool stuff. Um, you do notice. You do notice. Nazim is wearing this uh, v like thick armor scaled cloak. Uh, looks like fish scales on the cloak, uh, and is is walking with this big heavy staff, like a like a big heavy quarter staff with platinum ends on it. Um, you know, the, your 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 compatriots seem like they're pretty decked out in stuff. It's fun. Neat. Do you? I got have myself a, a lock picking kit for like. 30 or 40 gold now, so anyone <laughs> needs a lock to be picked. Probably just as helpful as the things you have. <laughs> I'm sure. It is. Guaranteed. Do you have a way to get your griffin back here? Sure! Then I'm just going to kind of tell him to fly back. Okay. I'm going to tell him to fly back and then like just still when he lands down, try to kind of land uh, if, well, we're, if we're in any kind of <laughs> safe area. Well, you're we outside of a barn. <laughs> I'm going to tell him to go on the other side of the barn away from the town. The opposite okay. side from the town. Okay. Uh, he's, it's going to be a minute. Like He, yeah, he he's you know, acknowledges that he's coming, but it's going to be a while. He'll be here okay. in a minute. Now, when he gets here, can you ride him, or is he just kind of... Sure. Not rideable. You can ride not him. Can carrying... anyone ride with you? Yeah, no, he could probably carry two. Or like, I mean, me and someone else. Okay, because... I can change myself into a griffin if he can carry two, then I can. And we can all just fly out of here. I can fly for two hours to at least get us out of this area. Perfect. Not sure how far he can fly or how fast because I accidentally deleted it from my sheet, I think. But he's probably pretty quick when he's up in the air, I guess. Yeah. Deleted what from your sheet? I don't know. I deleted a bunch of stuff from my, my sheet on accident when I was from playing Peter's with From sheet? Yeah, look at it. I somehow deleted like all the skills and the special movement is blank, and I know he's got flying oh. speed somewhere. So he's got eighty feet of flying speed. Fantastic. Without, without dashing, so perfect. He also has keen sight and dark vision for sixty feet. Well, I mean, it we're probably going to be flying, you know, through this this crap storm up here. So I don't know how great the vision will be, but. I mean, they're birds. It's like, he's like a bird thing with an eagle head. You think he could probably spot a mouse from a mile away. Exactly. Is that how birds work? I'm not, I'm not a birdologist. I'm not totally sure. I'm sure it'll be fine. We just have to figure out which way we're going. I mean, norox has got his thing he needs to do, which was a plan. So. What do you have to do, big guy? Oh, that's right. You're still a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you understand me? Can you understand me? <laughs> if he's a dog? <laughs> Got right. the you, the dog. <laughs> by about now, uh, Norhawk's form is beginning to revert. Uh, you see it kind of somewhat slowly over the span of six seconds or so, uh, growing back into the normal Norhawk shape, just as 
uh, as Peter uh, slams into the mud, splashing everybody. That's how are we, how are we gonna? How are we gonna get him? I mean, no offense, big guy, but I don't know if we can fly with him. Well, if you and Norok ride Peter. Oh, Norok's not gonna fit. Norok's not gonna fit on Peter. Me and maybe not. you, or or you know. Even Norok, even Norok by himself isn't going to be able to ride a griffin at 400 pounds. All right, if I turn into a giant owl, could I pick Norok up in one claw or both no, claws and have somebody ride know. my back? Uh, I doubt it. Let me look at the size of a giant owl. To, to carry 400 <laughs> pounds, remember birds like have, birds you weigh know. almost nothing. They have hollow bones so that they, they can fly. 400 could, pounds? Yeah, well, when he's carrying his gear, yeah, definitely 400 pounds. Easy. You could probably... Yeah, you could probably turn into like a T Rex and he can ride a T Rex across the <laughs> land. Hell yeah, dude. That'll, yeah. Be, that'll be inconspicuous. <laughs> fucking dinosaur yeah. across the plane. It might be incons it might be conspicuous, <laughs> but it'll A be hilarious. And B, who's gonna mess with him riding a T Rex? <laughs> it'll be terrifying. They'll be so caught they they'll no one they'll be stunned. They, they you'll there'll be stories written about it on the on the just the story of some random the giant, giant owl carrying a yog. The, country on a, <laughs> the, the whole country that is going to be terrified that, that, <laughs> that, uh, that yog have learned to train giant owls to fly them in with a oh, massive God. eight with massive six foot swords in each hand, <laughs> screaming a war cry. Oh man! Uh, giant owl, definitely not. Shit! There isn't anything that can fly that could carry him, is there? Probably like a rock. Which, like, you won't be able to rock or you know a dragon, something like that. Something, something with actual musculature that is large enough, maybe, but that definitely, definitely not. It. Yeah, not, not not a beast that you have. All right, uh, big guy. I was really hoping you wouldn't have to do this, but how would you feel about becoming a griffin so we can ride on you? <laughs> I was hoping to give you a ride instead, but it's it's not gonna work out that way. Well, it's if I got to I always carry you guys anyway, so at least this time I get to fly around instead of just having Pogo on my back kicking me and shit. <laughs> Like a little fucking kid. So. <laughs> like a back of an airplane, airplane yeah. seat? <laughs> pulling on my hair. Well, I don't have hair. I was going to say pulling on my hair and shit, but, you know. Beard, maybe. Yeah. Like a kid tugging on a beard. Okay. Well, I can still do this for two hours, so... Whoever's... I guess I'll ride with Nora. Where are we going? I don't even know where we're... What are we, what are we heading? We're, not, we're obviously avoiding that city filled with all the fucked up lanterns that are going to apparently make us some sort of pariah. Yeah, well, we have to start heading towards where Norak needs to go, because he's got a very oboe. Oh, that's right. How far away is that? How far away is that? That's like a few days, isn't it? Mm, probably a week of solid travel, heading yeah. southwest. All right. that, chapel, that would be, well, if you, if you were taking the roads, way. yeah, if you were taking the roads and, you know, kind of walking at a, you know, all day kind of a thing, it'll probably take you a solid week to get there. Um depending on weather and, you know, other things, it might take a little bit longer. Um, the chapel is like a, like an hour and a half to two hours walk on the road if you're going northeast. See, I was wondering if, if, I mean, do you want to at least, I could go in and maybe just, you know, cut all my magic and, and see if I could talk to someone there about your father and see if I could maybe just discuss, you know, getting him out. He's a hardworking man and I don't know if that's... I'm not did quite they, sure if that's something that may help. Did they hear that my dad was taken? Mm, Were they around for that part of the conversation? No, I don't think so. Artemis Artemi definitely would have. Um, I think actually, I Pogo, Pogo was right outside. Pogo, Pogo was right outside the door, remember, when she told you that. I heard as much as she... like. I was trying to get her to tell you where he is, yeah. so I know right. that he's gone. But the, almost one of the first things she said was that, that Rosanna had said is that uh, that they came and they took him. Uh, not necessarily where, but he but Pogo was right outside the door at that point. Before he had gone to go get the apples. Yeah. Great. So... Up to you. No pressure. I just maybe that we could maybe ask a question or two. Um, hang on just a second. Let me check something. Do you have like a a way of talking? I mean, communicating with your father, like I maybe. Have... Oh shit! That should have. God damn it! <laughs> it's all right. Private. Everybody ignore what she just rolled. <laughs> she meant to roll it privately. Yeah. 
I have no idea where my father is, so I would. All right. Either way, we just have to get out of town at this point. All right, no, that's so. fine. I'm more or less along for the ride here. I mean, if we if there's any city on the way that we can stop by and grab a drink, I wouldn't mind. But besides that, I've got some jingle in my pocket, so I'm I'm all right. Yeah. How about you, Nazim? Are you uh are you okay going to do some burial rites with uh, for our friend here? Sounds good. I'm along for the ride. Yeah, we'll look we'll look for some bees, maybe. <laughs> Always. Otherwise. All right. So you ready to do this? I mean, sure. There's no like, there's not like a train or anything that could get us there, right? This is, this is pretty much it. Well, see, no, but I'm worried about them, you know, searching for us, especially since I know my mother is going to tell them immediately that I was here. So right. So maybe, maybe let it cool down a bit and then come back, maybe if we need to, when when they're not looking for us. You know, exactly. there are, we could make it so that your mother doesn't tell them. All right, we're not going to burn her house down. I saw that. I see that look in your eye. I see it. I don't know how attached you are to her. As much as I despise my mother, my father loves her, and I love my mother, or my father, so we're just going to leave it at that. We should get going. All right, Peter. Time to earn your kibble. I'm going to go ahead and jump on him, and I'm going to get all strapped in with these little leather straps okay you gotta jump on here with me fox i'm just gonna do a kind of a little pat like right behind me you mean artemy artemy <laughs> this is what happens when your real name sounds too much like your fake game name <laughs> not, wow. i'm like 90 sure that's not even her real name in the first place <laughs> so jocelyn slash fox slash artemy go ahead <laughs> what what right. All right, Nazim, I guess that means you're with me and the big guy. And I'm just going to pat Nora off on the shoulder and polymorph him into a griffin. All right. Go ahead and mark off your spell slots. That is two casts of polymorph today, so, right? I uh, know. I got one left. All right. <laughs> so okay. I said two hours. All right, uh, are you? On here. Yeah. He's getting on here with me. Yeah, I guess. I'll okay. hop on. Ah, okay. don't be so sad. Go ahead. Strap in, strap on. Hold on right. to me tight. Then you all, uh, Sarah, you uh, climb onto the polymorph Norok. Uh, po- he's also into a griffin then? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Just to see, so it'll be two griffins flying with mounts then is what it'll look like? Yep. Or with people mounted, I guess. Okay. All right. Then you all uh, hop astride your uh, associated griffins and uh, both of them kind of lean down the haunches into the, into the mud, uh, kind of dipping in. At this point, it's been raining for so long that, you know, it's starting to get a decent you know a couple inches of water and mud into the uh in the into the uh ground and they both uh slam their wings down as fast as they can setting up a spray of mud that each of you are just completely instantly covered by just a, just a spray of of like rain with with you know mud mixed in uh obviously with the you know downpour it'll probably wash off pretty shortly but they each spring up into the air uh all of you then kind of heading skyward enough to to uh get some elevation and not be so visible from the ground What's the plan? Uh, start heading southeast. Southwest. Southeast or is into south, the bay. Southwest. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead. Okay. And pull, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of pull out my little talking stone and I'm gonna talk to uh, uh, Sarah. So, are we looking for anything in particular? Like, what are we? Is that a spot that we might be able to stop if it's a few days fly from here? Pretty much. Somewhere just- safe. We're just trying to get as far away from Pale as we can, or, you know... Oh, shit. Not Pale. Where am I from? Dunfield. Sure. We're trying to get as far away from Dunfield as we can, and, you know, at least two hours away and just drop off somewhere where they can land, and then we'll just walk from there, I guess. Because that's all I can do today. All right. Then, in that case, you heading southwest... Um, you are, well, I guess you're trying to, give me more details. Are you trying to stay up high enough that you're not going to be visible from the ground? Are you looking for any, um, uh, landmarks, anything of that sort? So, DM question first. Mm-hmm. Because it only lasts an hour, am I able to hit him with polymorph again before 
to it, recast like, before it falls. Yeah. Um, I would say so. I would say that as long as you recast it, you know, within the, the, the near, basically within the current duration that you can kind of, you know, add to the duration without having to land and then recast and go again. Okay. Then I would suggest going up as high as we can so we're not as noticeable. Okay. And then once it's getting towards the end of that second hour, drop down, see where okay. we're at. Um, and are you pushing the griffins to fly as fast as possible, or are you just kind of going at their normal pace? How far could we make it at a normal pace in two hours? How far away from Dunfield? Uh, do a little math here. Hang on a second. Uh, about, let's see, about a mile in two hours. Not super far. All right, so then I'd push them. Okay. Get them as far okay. as we can. All right, then you guys oh, you can, make it, so you can make it a couple miles southwest, uh, <laughs> which gets you past uh, the, the the town southwest of there uh, is, is Farguard. Uh, you you can't really see too well just from the kind of thick fog um, of the of the clouds and everything around, it's it's difficult to really see much of the ground. But just from the uh, shape of mountains in the distance and things like that, you estimate you're probably past Fargard. You're out past the farms and into the foothills to the southwest, uh, kind of leading out to uh, where White Hauler is and where. Well, you don't know this area, but you know Norok's familiar homelands. You can Norok, you can actually make them out with the sharp eyes of the Griffin. You can easily make out your your homelands in the distance. It's still going to be you know days before you could get there, but you can at least see them. All right, cool. What are you looking for as far as like when to settle down after the couple hours? Just any place that's big enough for them to land that isn't, you know, by somebody's house or <laughs> in a town. Okay. All right. Then you uh, setting setting down in uh, a decent copse of woods where you're, you know, surrounded enough on all sides that no one's going to even notice. Um, and you are kind of. Not quite there yet, but you'll be soon getting into the place where griffins are somewhat native anyway, and it's enough wildlands that you know people aren't going to turn too much of an eye if they were to see them. Uh, but you settle down in, in a, a decent enough clearing in some woods. Uh, there's enough wide space that this looks like it was probably cleared at some point because there's a lot of wood stumps, like you know where trees have been cut down. This area must have been logged out at one point um, and then not replanted. But there's a you know decent enough clearing that you could easily you know have some uh, some privacy here where people aren't going to see you and still have you know space enough for a fire without we're burning the forest down that kind of thing. Still raining very hard. What time of the day is it? Uh, after the two hours, it's about a little afternoon at this point, twelve thirty, one o'clock. Right. So, do you guys want to try to keep walking through this rain, or do you guys want to just make camp, tune our stuff, sleep, and head out in the morning? What do you think, Peter? <laughs> no, we're okay walking. He tells me. I mean, I don't mind the rain. It's a, it's a warm rain. It's it's more like you know, it's not that, that cold. Okay. Plus, fun that we can go puddle hump hunting. Have you ever gone puddle hunting? I wouldn't Probably, mind no. uh, the tuning, but at the same time, I don't mind if you Oh, that's right. You've got that pretty little cloak. We should probably rest for a few minutes then. Okay. I yeah. don't want I don't want us to spend, what, 100,000 gold on this pretty shiny new coat just to have him die before he gets to use it. All right. How does right. it fit? Does it fit good? Quite well. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also spend my rest. I'm going to switch over um, one of my items that I've got attuned, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to switch over the uh, Hat of Disguise for my Marathosian Knitting Needles. Okay. You're, okay. you're turning or unattuning the hat? Yeah, uh, the uh, hat, yes. Yeah, unattuning that to, re to attune the Marathosian Knitting Needles. Okay. All right. I'm so going to attune the boots. All right. How do I do that? Uh, in your I character we used to sheet, be able to click on it. But yeah, it's not now now you have to. Yeah, it's it's a little different now. I'm hoping that they change it either back or to a, a different system. But anyways, uh, to to the right, you see the little edit button. To the right of the item, it looks like a square with a pencil in it. Yes. Click that, and then go to details, and you'll see a, a box that says attunement required. Change that to attuned. 
And then for the thing you take it off, change that to attunement required for the you know one you take off. Question uh, yep. for the short rest. Can mm-hmm. I attune more than one item? I can attune a maximum of three. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a maximum of three total. Uh, it's supposed to be one per hour, but I would say since you guys know if, if, if it's if you guys are taking a break here for you know an hour and a half or something like that, that'll that'll be enough. Okay, so no, a long not break. right at the hour. Uh, I'll be attuning two of my items then. Yeah, that's fine. Does anyone have any blood? <laughs> By the way, I am I am I have now. Apparently, my eyes are bigger than my backpack because I uh, am fucking encumbered with this crowbar and shit. I really want to keep it, but I I also am just too tiny of a person. I'm well, we really have a bag of holding. Yeah, I I'm just wondering. Do you guys mind? Uh, I really don't want to give you my banjo. I really care about that a lot. I'm gonna give you. I have a few costumes. One of them is a very colorful peacock type costume that I wear during some of my shows. And another one, uh, this one right here is my fancy dress costume, but everything's over exaggerated. It's when I pretend to be like a noble in a play. And this third costume is mostly black leather belts uh, yeah. and this face mask with a zipper on the front of it. And that's, <laughs> that's really my a personal thing. But do you mind holding on to that's for the my, uh, my, do you mind holding on to my clothes? <laughs> They're like, and I just pulled out literally 12 pounds of fucking folded <laughs> costumes. Whatever you want to put in the bag, just remember you some... might not always be able to grab it. No, I mean, I, I mean, the, it, if I promise you, if we're in the middle of battle, I think me changing into my gimp, I mean, fun costume <laughs> isn't going to really be time sensitive. So we'll probably be all right. Um, you don't, know, you don't know how many emergencies you're going to have needing a gimp costume. Yeah, I'm gonna try to just add them myself into the bag of holding. You should be able to just drag it onto the bag. Yep. Work. Uh, but it doesn't automatically delete it, it from. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so delete go ahead and delete it. it. Yeah, exactly. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Uh, then everybody settling in. Are you guys, you know, making a fire or you know, making lunch or anything like that? It is For raining. An hour? So, well, that's what no. I'm saying. Are you guys? Are you guys just you know, kind of taking a break and you know, breathing and eating or something like that? I'm all full of apple. <laughs> the half apple you ate? Half of all. This, bu- so. this new update also, apparently, I can't seem to find where my overall weight is anymore. Uh, very bottom, you should see a bar across the bottom of your inventory tab. I want to hit the short Ah, uh, there it is, rest. 116. I don't have to hit roll, right? Uh, you, yeah, you, well, you'll hit S rest instead of L rest. And yeah, you know, the roll thing, if, if you needed to roll hit dice, you could. But I think you're still at max hit points, so you probably don't need to roll any hit dice. Gotcha. There you go. Uh, Norok, no, uh, Pogo did not apply a short rest yet. Nah, I don't think I, I mean, I can, but... Yeah, I don't know if you actually needed to, if you missed Link. anything or not, but... I don't think I am, but it's cool. Okay, what's everybody cool, doing cool, for cool, this cool. for this break? Uh, Sarah's going to find a tree to sit under, so she's not as wet. Okay. And then just attune to the boots and check her scroll. Okay. Uh, you the the boots you see are clearly from a creature that you don't necessarily recognize. It's probably it looks like it must be some kind of a large feline. It seems um, the the skin the the leather of the boots. Uh, but as soon as you've finished attuning them, uh, you know, and, and, and kind of put them on, lace them up, and everything. Uh, they even looking at your feet is a little bit disorienting because they're they're it looks like they're moving when they're not um, like a, like twitching almost uh, so so it's a kind of a disorienting appearance everybody else anyone looking in Sarah's direction would see her kind of shimmering in place like a little bit blurry um, as far as the scroll you pull out the uh, telescription well the case and and uh, uh, look at the scroll and there has not been a response yet it's only been at this point like two, two hours, hours and ten minutes or something you know not very long. Uh, since yeah, since you wrote to him, yeah, she's just trying to check it as often as she can. Sure. At this point. Okay. What's everybody else uh, doing? Uh, I'm gonna check out the arcane trap we picked up. Okay. Um, it is when it's basically as soon as you picked it up, it kind of fell in half again. The way that that when he first pulled it out, it was just like a, a horseshoe shape, like a big U shape essentially, uh, like ha- like a, a bear trap that's you know collapsed, not not uh, hold held open. Um, 
and it, it you know feel basically you can easily put it away that way it seems like it kind of folds up that way uh it's this the same dark metal that you guys have been used or had been used on you guys previously when you were uh, captured by the slavers um kind of a, a you know almost black with almost like a sparkly star field in, in it like sparkles inside of it like a pearlescent car uh pearlescent paint um, but it, it appears pretty easy and simple to deal with. You basically just you can you can uh, pull it open and it, it has resistance to it, like it's spring loaded. Um, and you know if you set it down, essentially it would be you, would, you saw how it functioned already. But you can understand how it how it works. It doesn't require an attunement or anything of that sort. But anything that it is clasped around is unable to access any arcane rails of any sort. It doesn't do damage though. I'll keep it for now. See if it's um, useful later. Sure. Anybody else checking anything else out? Doing anything else? I, I don't think I have anything. We're just attuning to the cloak and, and uh, the ring of healing surges. Okay. Uh, not the staff? The staff requires attunement as well, if you were going uh, to. You, you're one over to, also. To, yeah. I'm, I'm already attuned to our thermos gloves. That's a total of three. I can yeah. three, right? Yep. Yeah. And then okay. As I'm attuning to the cloak, I... I extend my leg out and uh, point my toe to the ground and wave my arm like Vanna White in an improving manner. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, the the cloak um, are they're a sheaf of, of like aquatic scales that have been stitched into like a, a thick uh, uh, black uh, cloth. Um, but it's it, you can kind of move the scales in either direction. But you notice that any time that you kind of put force behind it, uh, that the scales kind of interlock and become a very hard surface. Uh, kind of the same way that you, you felt when Gamfoot, the halfling, uh, had punched you. Uh, but basically, with that attuned, uh, you'll have the plus three to AC, and then any ranged weapon attacks against you will have uh, disadvantage, as long as you keep it attuned. Right. So with that on, your AC is 13. And then I'll just look at my hand like a newly engaged woman. <laughs> at the All right, with, the, with the ring. All right. Wait, is your AC still only 13? With the cloak on, it's 13, yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Dang. <laughs> I mean, 13 is is pretty... It's not uncommon for a caster uh, to, to... Like, the casters generally have low AC anyways, but uh, uh, Sako kind of built him to be a glass cannon a little bit. Cool. And I thought Sarah was squishy. Uh, Sarah with, with mage armor on is only 13. 13 or 14, right? No. Well, then why does it say my armor class right now is 16? Uh, that's with mage armor on, then. Uh, let's oh. see. Your dex is probably higher. You should have got a better feet. Yeah, I got a good feet. <laughs> yeah, your your base is thirteen Strength feet. It's okay. it's thirteen and then sixteen with shadow skin on. Which speaking of, you don't have on right now, right? So I just took that no. off. Yeah. Yeah. So you're back to thirteen right now. I didn't realize everyone was so squishy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, AC is not one of those things. So in practically any RPG, right? You you know, it's a number that always goes up and up and up, like your armor would always get better and better. Yeah, yeah, uh, just in, caps. <laughs> well, I mean, you never hardly ever see anybody at 20 or even above that at all, like almost never, but it's one of those things that once you have enough funds to buy decent armor, it pretty much doesn't change, unless you get some magic items that change it. It's not well, something that just constantly goes up like an RPG. My feet, that helped a lot. So I could wear medium armor, that's what I, that's what I fucking did. Um, <sighs> Justin, we, we talked about that a few weeks ago that yeah, griffins are, are a beast in my world. They're not, oh, okay. a, not a monstrosity. Yeah. They're, they're food. They're, they're just an animal. Got it. I was just curious. I was like, yeah. I was wondering if there were any other um, options since uh, like to go with that type of ruling, but I don't feel well, like... Well, actually, that, that came because of earlier on when the rest of the party before you joined uh, was in a place called Morvok. Uh, mm -hmm. There were griffins there that were just animals. They, they were, you know, pre uh, they were predators in the mountains, essentially, just like giant mm -hmm. birds, really. And, uh, you know, since they were already kind of Got it. counted as beasts, we've just left it as such. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Then the 90 minutes or so of break uh, over with. Uh, Sarah, use your arcane recovery to get a spell slot back. Yeah, I had only used one for a spell, but since that's all I can get back, I figured I might as well use it. Okay. All right, what's the plan? You guys finish kind of going over your newly earned equipment, attuning as needed, uh, but you're, you know, the, the, the break's up, everybody's starting to get a little bit, you know, ready to go. What are you guys doing? I'm, I'm playing my banjo, and I'm seeing if Nazim likes my song I've been working on. Do you want to hear a song, Nazim? 
Tell me, this is a new song I'm working on. Are you ready? I once had a lass with a great big breasts. Tumble all around with a hey nanny ho. She's a mountain range upon her chest. For tuppence and a wink, she's ready to go. Tis a wondrous thing, as each man knows. Tumble all around with me hey nanny ho. But no matter how I suck, no milk will flow. Tumble all around with me hey nanny ho. What do you think? <laughs> Is that what's his name, sister? Is that who that song's supposed to be about? No, I don't even remember her names. <laughs> That's more of a general quant, like that's more general women in general, you know. Just thinking about some, some you know, past times before the world went to shit around me. <laughs> Are you saying the world went to shit around you when you met us? I mean, it seems like the the timing is pretty close, but I don't think you're the cause. <laughs> I'm assuming we're doing this while we're walking. <laughs> okay, so you are. Are you well, all I'm, getting up I'm, and, and starting to march yeah. then? Peter, yeah. I'm just riding Peter, but uh, we're not flying. We're just kind of walking. Okay. All right. Sinking into the mud a little bit. You guys are kind of in the middle of the woods, you know, enough that uh, uh, kind of the undergrowth and, and needles and, and uh, you know, pine needles and shit uh, are kind of keeping from, from too much actual sinking, but still every footstep, the water soaks up around your feet and starts to soak into your brand new boots, Sarah. Um, the skin seems to be, you know, kind of... Oh. Go ahead. If, if I feel water starting to get in my boots, I'm going on the broom. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna. I, I'm, me and Peter are gonna go school. We'll we'll fly up and we'll take a look in in front of you guys. Um, use the stone if you need to reach me for something. But we're just gonna fly high and see if we can see any trouble on the road. Okay. All right. Don't fall off. I'm strapped in. <laughs> we'll probably do a loop de loop, and I'd be all right. I'm not gonna test it, but <laughs> we'll, we'll probably be fine. You don't want to tempt the DM to see if you roll and sure. fall off. Break your neck. It breaks. Yeah. Pogo has to uh, be in a wheelchair for the rest of the game. <laughs> then you, uh, I'll uh, do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Bigsby hand myself at one of the point. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and fly. I'm gonna try to keep about uh, maybe a quarter mile um, ahead and probably about 200 feet up. So I'm okay. not like so I can still see what's happening in front, like on the general path trail. Well, uh, you lift up, and as soon as you're above the the tree line, uh, you know, not not 15 feet above the tree line, uh, you can easily see out to the road, and the road is almost completely empty. Uh, you do, you know, there there are uh, two wagons or so that you see kind of pulled off the side of the road with little smoke, uh, uh, you know, pillars of smoke coming out of them. It looks like you know whoever was traveling just just stopped because the rain's too thick. Uh, with the with you know in the mud and so on, so they probably stopped and maybe set up a you know campfire or something like that. But as far as actually on the road and moving, the only the only group you see at all, other than you know ones and twos here and there, um, is a column of probably about forty or so uh, fully armed uh, Juthrans that are heading the road towards Pale, towards Eiffel. So are they? They're heading towards yeah, where we're they're, coming they're, from. They're, yeah, they're they're towards. Not really towards you guys, because you guys are in the woods north of the yeah, road. Off the road. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, they're they're just following the road to the northeast, kind of heading back the way you guys are coming from. All right, I'm gonna kind of fly back and just kind of try to keep away from out of sight, hopefully. Uh, and I'm just gonna let everyone know to stay away from the road. That there's a bunch of there's a bunch of Juthrins. Hello, pineapple. There's a bunch of Juthrins on the on the road coming up. It looks like maybe forty of them, just a shitload walking up here so make sure you avoid the roads guys and i'm actually going to kind of fly back down uh under the tree line back where they are okay all right and uh peter takes you back down uh the, the the trees are sparse enough that you can easily kind of dip in and out as needed uh you're not in a dense forest at this point um uh, you do spot a lot of uh stumps here and there where this has been obviously deforested at some point and then regrown uh, you know, at some point over the last probably 100 years or something, it's because the, old, the trees around you are still old enough. But anyways, uh, you settle back down uh, with the group. Everybody's just, just walking southwest then? we got to yeah. stay away from the road, guys. Yes. Okay. Take back roads, staying in the okay. tree. Okay. All right. Then uh, making your way southwest. I don't have a, a world map section to, to you know, part, report you guys over to for that. Um, so let me see if I can find one here. I have a couple of... Uh, this will work. Uh, do we know if they're... Here. Like, if the road itself is even really going to be super helpful? Like, does it lead to the direction we need, or no? Um, 
Kind of. It, it follows the coastline, and you guys need to go more straight west. Okay. So it's like, eh, it's not like it's not going to kill us to not be on the road. No. It, I mean, honestly, it would be eventually, before long, it would be kind of out of your way anyways to follow it. Okay. All right. Yeah. That makes sense. Roads, am I right, guys? Remember that one time we were running across a road and Norok like, was pulling a cart and we thought we were going to fucking die? <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was before you were with us, Nazim, but it was, it was, it was like, Interest. yeah, it was, it was, uh, fucking while camping. Intense. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a joke. You can feel free to laugh at the jokes, guys. I'm not, I'm like, I'm now, I'm like scratching that off on my little, uh, little notepad. Uh, your little joke book. <laughs> it didn't, it didn't land. So you got to take it off. Oh, that's not great. That's not great at all. I set so, that darker and it didn't go darker. So what do you guys want? Just walking. There aren't any exploding plant life in this area, right? No. I usually stay in the cities. I'm, I'm definitely more, uh, you know, I'm out in the wilderness with you probably more than I've been in half my life. I don't think there would be. No, I think that's, you know, just her island. All right. That's fair. <sighs> Just trudging. Trudging, and am I right? Yep. Ah! I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just kill every Just... hour or so, Sarah is checking her scroll. Okay. Just so you're aware. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? My eyes are always up looking for beehives. You do notice, of course, that Artemis is still wearing that Wood Sage's chorus on her forehead. The crown. Oh, shit. That's why I have my hood up. <laughs> Weren't you supposed to leave that so they could heal my knee? I already healed her with it. She just needs time to recover. Is... Okay. Are we sure that's what they said? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I opened a tab looking for random D and D jokes, and one of them was playing music so loud, and I just I was just now struggling because I thought it was Jeremy playing this weird ass music, and I'm sorry, <laughs> I have no idea what happened in the last forty five seconds. I will have you know, I take offense uh, to that. I, 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 I curate, well, I, I curate like the a, music that I play on here very carefully. You think I play legit, some weird ass music? It was legit like like Christmas music, just without <laughs> words, and I was like, what is happening? Uh, there's there is some Christmas music when when uh, when when you guys have been uh, when candle. In fact, I meant to play this for you guys the other day, but when candle nights comes around, then I then I play some like kind of Christmassy oh, yeah. themes. But there is, oh, if I can yeah. find it, where is there it is. All right, uh, Sako, you get a kick out of this. <laughs> is it Fantasy Costco? Yeah, it's Fantasy Costco. Yep. Nice. <laughs> With a whole jingle and everything. <laughs> uh, that one used to play when they would go to Fantasy Costco as well. Up uh, on the moon base thing. So anyone have any fun stories while we're trudging along? How long is this going to take us? You're one-tenth of the way at this point. It's going to take uh, you a solid week. Walking week? through through awful rain. We have no way of, and this is as close as we could get, huh? This is the best we could. We could is it going to rain for the whole week? Nah. Sorry, uh, Peter. Uh, Artemé can tell you what the weather would be for the next week. Not anymore. Can I wait? Can I? Is that some sort of neat magic trick that you have that you can say? Yeah, it is. Uh, no, it used to be. I don't have it anymore. I would say the druid, the, that portion of druid craft, especially by 10th level, that you would just innately have uh, the ability to be able to foresee what the weather will likely be. Okay, I wouldn't well, say it's 100% accurate, but, you know, still fair enough. Okay, well, I don't know how I'd do that, but I'll check. Uh, I will have to roll it on a sheet, so you're going to hold on a second, let me tell. You know, there was once a time I was in a town, and I was rubbing this lamp, and apparently it was supposed to be magical. And uh, suddenly this creature popped up and started talking nonsense about how much it hated women. And apparently it was a misogyny. 
Uh-huh. Gratching it out in my little book. <laughs> Misogyny? No, seriously. I, I, I might have been above the heads of you guys. I'm not sure. Right. Okay. Fox, did you see it that? It may work on someone else. Okay. Ooh. I wonder if Minotaurs or Minotaur normally are good like nannies. Like, do you think a lot of the children they take care of like die, or is it just the ones that we hang out with? Oh, oh that's killed. terrible. That's not a joke. I'm just seriously making conversation right now. Like, children in Neotau, Minotaur. I am sure if it was a different situation, everything would have been fine. It just seems weird that there's children hanging out with them in the first place to me, I suppose. I mean, they're- It's because they felt more comfortable with the Mia Tao than actual people. Do you think they're just, like, normally very good babysitters? No, it, their culture was more similar. Ah. I'm sure they're very protective, which helps. Did it, though? That wasn't <laughs> their fault. That I just don't. It's, it's it's strange. I think the strange thing is that you know two of them passed away, and then the third one is still like, all right, I'll still hang out with you. Yeah, but it's not the Mia Tao's fault. No, it's not. Just weird. <laughs> Maybe not four star review. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> You know, maybe we should start looking for a place to camp, guys. Is it even, is it late out? I can't even really tell. It's so fucking gray outside. With the, with, with the density of the tree, you know, the tree cover, um, it's not super thick, but between that and the clouds, uh, which are getting darker and darker, um, you're, you can, you already know for sure that by now it is 4 p.m., 4 to like 4, you know, 4 and a half, or 4 and a half, 4 30 p.m. <laughs> Uh, somewhere there about. Um, so, you know, it's, it's starting to get late in the day, but it's not, you know, not nighttime just yet. I'm going to go take, I'm going to take Peter up again, and we're going to do a quick little flight above the tree line and see if we can see anything dangerous. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and keep my my wits about me to, to cast uh, my normal usual if I need to. All right, look for a place to camp. All right, I'll see if I can find a nice clearing. Okay. Uh, then you wow. lift up above the tree line a bit uh, to to look around. Uh, you see that that kind of in your path, not too far off, um, is a very large uh, fungal. Like it, it's a tree that is just covered in a, in, a, in a, a, a ton of fungus, like a bunch of mushroom caps that are all over it. Um, and it's clear that it is the dwelling of something. There's a big hole in the front of it that that it would be kind of a, essentially a doorway or a way in. Um, but you don't see. What the creature might be, or what you know, what uh, what its occupant would be. Uh, Does it but it's look kind of like a doorway, as in like a hole, or a doorway like there's a door. There, you don't see a door, but they're very well. Like it's smooth enough around it that clearly something of uh, intelligence has kind of okay. made the hole smooth. Uh, but it kind of goes into this tree root too far. There might be a door behind it, you don't know. Are there any footprints that look like a large ogre yes. or a donkey? Uh, you do, in the mud, which, I mean, are, are pretty quickly being washed away, so you gather this must be relatively recent. Go ahead and give me a survival check. Survival. Sure. Also, I'm going to let you guys know it's going to get worse thunderstorm. And, or, probably. You get hit by lightning. It's going to be hilarious. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna use yeah, my little. I'm but, gonna use my little stone and be like, "Do you guys know if there is like someone living out here in a mushroom-covered tree, possibly a larger thing? Looks like they might at least take care of their lawns. <laughs> Mushrooms. I'm going to. How far away am I from the group? Uh, not far. You're only just above the tree line, so you're probably, okay. you know, 45, 50 feet away. Up and above. How, f- how far away am I from this tree? 
it's probably a hundred yards away. There's a huge okay. clearing in the woods, and and everybody's kind of walking in the direction of it. Okay, I'm just gonna uh, I'm, I'm I'm gonna go take a quick look, just a peek, but I'm gonna keep my distance and see if I can say hi to our new neighbors. Is that okay, or do you guys want to wait? Because there's a big clearing there, and it might be nice to get out of the rain if they're friendly. Does Sarah have any idea what he's talking about? Has she heard anything about anything up here? Mm. Pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't forget your pineapples. Uh, which, by the way, um, uh, Nazim does not have one. Yeah, so keep that in mind. Uh, at least so far, uh, not really. Go ahead and give me a history check. I'm just, just Sarah kinda reading people as as I'm going along. So sure. Yeah, the the pineapple thing. You see them occasionally reaching a hand up, and you see that each of them have this kind of earring on, like a a blue sapphire stone oh, yeah. uh, like uh, earring. Show. Yeah, it's 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 a rocky talky. It's it's the same thing you guys had, uh, just a different version of it um, from balance. But basically, you know, it's a they're, they're communicating through that, and you see them using that to do so. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little whisper. Whisper. Someone give me a mythical creature or entity, some sort of D and D thing. I'm gonna come up with a joke for it. Beholder. Got it. I don't know how long it'll take me, but I'll come up with a joke for it. Do I? Mm, I'm assuming that's a bad thing. Not necessarily. It's it, the the impression that you always had about that was one that it probably wasn't anything at all, or that it was just one of those things that people make up to scare kids to go to sleep. All right, uh, pineapple. Be super careful. There's an old wives' tale about a woods witch out here. So, you know, just be on your guard. A woods witch, like a like a lady. Probably not what you're thinking. All right. <laughs> well, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to stay about 20 to 30 yards. I'm going to go up ahead a little bit. I'll stay about so 90 feet or so away from the front of this uh, um, area. Do I see any lights on inside? Is there any way of knowing that? There's smoke. There, there's smoke coming from the, out the top of this. So so imagine like a tree that was cut down a long time ago, but still huge, like a massive, oh. massive tree, like a redwood, right? Yeah. Uh, a a cored out redwood that is just covered in fungus and, tr- and uh, 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 mushrooms all over it with one kind of really large mushroom cap that's covering over the surface. It's acting kind of like a roof almost. God, uh, and that's there's like, like a, a chimney coming up out of it. That's awesome. That's like $300 a night Airbnb right there. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, is there, uh, anyone in this beautiful, lovely home? And I, again, I'm still like 90 20, feet, 30. it's raining really hard. It's, you, you, you are not going to be audible through the rain, you're sure. All right. Uh, I am going to use, uh, do, 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 do. Mm. Ah, you only live once. I'm going to go about, uh, do I think I could do it like from 40, 50 feet away from the front? Maybe. Like there, that's about the point at which you it might be possible if you yelled loud okay. enough. Uh, I am going to go ahead and cast light. Um, just kind of a, a, a kind of a right behind, like right to the side of me. Uh, see, does that have to be on an object? Let me just double check. You're putting shadow skin up, Becky? Yes, there is. Okay. Lord. Yep, I am just going to uh, cast light on. I'm still wearing my hat. Uh, ah, no, I'm not going to cast light. I'm just going to keep like kind of flying 20, 30 feet above in my little saddle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm just going to yell out from about 40, 50 feet away. Excuse me, is the uh, owner or person living here available? Uh, or just in halfway, travelers, halfway you'd like to sentence. say hello. Halfway through the sentence, you get interrupted. Um, and from behind, you hear like a small kid's voice, like a little boy's voice, uh, and it's a it's a loud gasp. Is that a griffin? 
and you turn around and over your shoulder, still kind of strapped into into Peter, you kind of make him rotate in place. Uh, you look over and there, there's a, a little kid uh, covered in mud, uh, holding an armful of sticks, uh, like like a bundle of, you know, he's just been out gathering fire, what it looks like. Um, and he's just covered, like splattered in mud, head to toe, but his like mouth is agape and eyes wide, like he is surprised to see, a, a, you know, a griffin here. Sure, I. This is a griffin. What's your What's your name? I'm my, I'm Pogo. Why? I didn't expect you know you to be out here alone in the cold and the rain. Are, are you okay? I'm. Uh, I mean, I'm. I'm. I need to. I'm trying to find my dog. I'm Hubel, but you have a griffin. I. I have a griffin. Um. Your name's Hubold. Yeah, I'm Hubold. All right. Um. Do you live here at this house? Uh, kind of. But I mean, and I'm, I've got to do an insight check real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, fucking little kid trying to pull one over on me. <laughs> pull me once. <laughs> Has a kid tried to pull one yeah. over on Pogo before? When? The whole group. One time ago, some little girl turned out to be some. She was humming some song, or there's some song humming. <laughs> yeah, I remember what you're talking about. Dogs. Oh wait, I don't even think I was there. I think I just that's the when I, I watched it. Yeah, thing. it was. Uh, yeah. It wasn't that wasn't a little girl, but yeah. Yeah. Um, he as far as you can tell, he seems to be telling the truth. He seems mm-hmm. uh, in in awe of a griffin that you have, you know, somehow tamed. Uh, and, but he he you know seems to be concerned and and maybe not you know okay. in the best shape a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly kind of to the side, uh, not any closer to the building, and I'm gonna land the Griffin, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and unstrap and get off, and then telepathically I'm gonna tell Peter to get ready to attack if anything attacks me. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to walk a little closer. Uh, I uh, do, do you want to do you want to pet him? He's friendly, and I'm gonna tell him to be friendly to this this child. Um, and it just seems like a normal kid carrying a bunch of wood. Uh, I would say that based on the situation, you definitely have, you know, kind of hairs on the back of your neck standing up a little bit. Okay. But yeah, he does seem like right. he's just a, just a kid, which w- way too young to be out here by himself. Um, but, you know, holding, you know, armful of, of uh, firewood. Uh, now that you're a little bit close, you see that he's probably been crying, it seems like. It's just, you know, the, like the streaks of the of rain and so mud. Our- it's hard to tell. Are you so you're missing your dog? Your, your, your pet isn't. Uh, you, you, you've lost your dog. Yeah, R- Rufus came out with me, but but I was I was digging up, digging up the sticks, and and when I got him, he was gone, and, and now I can't find him. Do you? Do, and and so you kind of live here with your your dog, and do, okay. Well, I'll tell you what if. if is there anyone else here? Like, do you you don't live here alone, right? You just you seem a little young to be out here in the forest on your own. Well, no, Grandma's here. Grandma, okay. Grandma, she's inside. Is Grandma nice? Would would Grandma be uh, amenable to having visitors? Grandma doesn't like strangers. Okay, well then, uh, do you, do you, are you okay here? Do you, you're you're. Blink no, twice. I need. I have to go get Rufus, or Grandma will be mad. All right, let's let's go find Rufus, and I'm gonna just start walking. Is it maybe this direction? And I start walking towards the group. <laughs> he actually he was in the kind of the space between where the party is and right. the house. He came in gonna, behind you, basically. I'm gonna so. tell uh, I'm gonna tell uh, Peter to just follow us, and I'm just gonna walk back, and I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna try to slightly just. I'm going to kind of tap my ear with a little stone and be like, there's a child who's looking for a dog. So if you see a dog and we're on our way to you, apparently this is happening. We might. So see you in a few. (laughs) Uh, You weren't super far ahead. I mean, but you're far enough. Obviously they can't hear each other except for over the stone. But, um, uh, then you kind of turning around away from the house, heading back into the woods a little bit. Uh, yeah. He's actually he's a little bit tall, like a like an inch or two taller than you. He's a sure. human child, uh, so I said little, but I guess for you he would be you know a little bit taller than you even right. um, for for a human kid. You guess he's probably like eight ish, um, you know somewhere thereabout. Uh, but he's uh, it, when you start walking to the woods, it's, I I can't believe you've got a griffin. How did you how did you get one of them to to, to be nice? Well, you know, for starters, I, I did go around losing him in the forest. Probably helps, you know, keep an eye on your pets and all. The big trick you hear, is... You hear him, like, get a little bit choked up when you say that. 
yeah, I'm sorry, but, you know, sometimes life lessons are a little, little difficult to learn. But, you know, you lose him this time, and you'll learn from it, and you'll get a leash, and you'll make sure he listens to your commands, right? You know how to do that? Just train him a little bit. Have you tried, like, feeding your dog, you know, rabbits or anything? It works for this thing. He doesn't usually need to eat, which is why I was so, you know, when he ran off, I, I didn't know what he was going, where he was going, but I I don't know. I just, I, I, I've been looking for the last, I don't know, I'm, just, I, I have, I'm, I'm losing daylight and I've got to get back before Grandma gets mad. And I just, I got so worried because he wouldn't come back and he's not answering it. I don't know where he went. I'm going to use a stone of far speech. Okay. Uh, ask him what the dog looks like, and then I'm going to send Noctua out to see if she can't spot the dog. Okay. All right. Uh, so what does your dog look like? Uh, I mean, he's he's real big, and he holds his arms up, you know, as far as he can. Um, and and he, he kind of, he likes to dig, and uh, he, he's got this kind of dark brown uh, skin, and uh, he's, you know, really getting distracted it seems like trying to describe it uh but he's uh, he's he, he is real real good at digging he's brown and big pineapple <laughs> so i'll just tell noctua to look out for a big brown dog that digs <laughs> <laughs> okay out of curiosity um so how long have you lived with your grandmother uh i don't know it's I, is, 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 I think always. It's pretty much always. Well, that, that's interesting, I suppose. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not I'm exactly a child uh, person. You know, I don't really get along with children. I don't know how to talk to you. So um, I'm, we can look for your dog and maybe maybe we'll we'll help you find it. Uh, but your, your grandma, she, basically, she's not really agreeable to to strangers around her home, is that correct? Yeah, she doesn't like strangers. Right. Is she lonely? No, you wouldn't know that. Never mind. Don't worry about it. I said that. Don't don't even worry about it. <laughs> how, how are you guys? Come on. Are we here yet? <laughs> this kid's a freak. I mean, this, uh, we're just walking. My friends are right up here. I'm sure they're right around this corner. <laughs> I'm staying towards the back of the group since I'm in shadow skin. Okay. I'm gonna go see any... if I can find dog prints. Do you have any parents? Okay. Or is it just grandma? Just just grandma and me. I think I had parents, but it's it's I I, I don't remember them anymore. Anyway, I'm gonna see if I have any way of I feel like this. Something's wrong with this kid. I don't know what. <laughs> <sighs> is your grandma a nice? Like, if have you ever had strangers here before? Like, is she? I know she doesn't like strangers, but she does. She do anything extra mean? She doesn't hurt people or anything, right? She doesn't hurt you. Artemis, that'd be a survival check. Um, I could use the d twenty though. Whatever your modifier is, just tell me what that is. A plus eight. Okay. All right. So a little bit better then. Um, you do see a lot of uh, animal prints. They definitely don't look like dog, though. Okay. Yeah, but there—I mean, there are a lot, but there are animal prints all over the place. It is, you know, the woods after all. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a little curious. Um, so I, I am going to, uh, kind of awkwardly put my hand on the kid's shoulder to try to console him to tell mm -hmm. him it's all right but what i'm actually doing is i'm checking to see if like his physical form matches what he actually looks like 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 do you know what i'm saying i'm trying to see if like it's like a illusion on his physical form so i'm sure like touching him by the shoulders to find out if he's like it's all right we're gonna find your dog and everything will be fine okay but i'm um, secretly just like this is a shoulder not a fucking spike right <laughs> <laughs> uh it's not a spike but since since you were so specific in, in what you're looking for, I'm going to say this is below the passive for, for being able to tell uh, what you what you feel there. Um, the skin, the, the the shoulder, like the where it should feel like clothes, doesn't. It feels like old, waterlogged skin. All right, it's going to be okay. We're going to find we're going to find your dog, okay? Maybe and telepathically, that. telepathically, I am going to tell Peter to. Uh, mm. 
I'm gonna just straight up tell Peter to attack this fucking kid. <laughs> Just straight fucking just and, and then as soon as he attacks him, I'm going to um, I'm just going to cast um, uh, da, 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 da. How far away are we at this point? Actually, uh, can I, I mean, he got I, he got a decent distance, but not super. I far. would like to do this instead. Yards. I would like Peter to try to just um, come up and put his like try to just knock this kid shaped thing down. And I want to use my an action as my like hopefully like first thing to mm-hmm. just put the immovable rod activate it directly like on this kid's back so it's like face down whatever it is <laughs> pin, the mud, to pin him to the ground just pin him to the ground like just put it on his back okay turn activate it and then uh, let go and step away what did you say d i really hope this actually is just a kid <laughs> that way at least i'm not murdering a kid at least <laughs> at least it's giving me a little bit of wiggle room here all peter knows is ball and good <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I'm telling him to do that telepathically while I'm just kind of do ba do do. All right, uh, give me give me an attack roll from the uh, from the Griffin. All right. Uh, do you want me to just do a like strength roll? No. Uh, well, he should have. I mean, whatever yeah, his, sure. uh, his his attack rolls are on the right. I don't know what all they have, but let me look real quick here. Yeah, it's a beak or claws. I'll say it's claws. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, which any, anything just to be an attack roll would be fine. Hand banana attack. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, uh, you hear then without turning away, you're just telepathically having this communication without mm-hmm. kind of, you know, giving yourself away and looking at Peter. Uh, you, you tell him what to do, and there's kind of a, 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 a moment of hesitation. Like Griffin, or like Peter does not want to do this for some reason. And then you hear a charge oh, and, and <laughs> of, of, of the wings flapping, where he kind of, you know, gives himself a burst of speed by flapping his wings and then rushing forward. Uh, and as he kind of dives through the air and tries to, you know, you, you kind of feel just this, this uh, vacuum of space behind you as he kind of pulls the air away uh, and then crashes into where it should be. Uh, or where where uh, where the boy should be, uh, the boy just instantly spins out of the way, looking in your direction, and you see this flash of just rage cross his features. Uh, the mouth grows too large. It, <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> what? An apple need help. <laughs> uh, the mouth the mouth grows too large. The jaw kind of elongates and stretches down until uh, the the bottom of the jaw is like mid chest for this kid, uh, and it starts to squeak. There's just this this obnoxious screech in your direction. Uh, and it, it just dipped out of the way, so so Peter kind of crashes into the mud between between you and whatever this thing is across from you, uh, and you see the form beginning to grow up over the size of the griffin, like behind, beyond the, the back of the griffin, who is already much taller than you. You see this kind of almost hag-like elongated form grow up uh, up and above with this this uh, kind of grotesque elongated mouth full of teeth and, and a spiky uh, oh, uh, protrusion spacing down in your direction. I was thinking having sex with you! With with an eight year old boy, what the no, fuck? The, the hag, the hag. <laughs> eight year old boy. You no, thought no, he was an eight year old I, boy. I, I, at this point, it's actually this hag thing that the lady that uh, Sarah was telling me about. <laughs> I was gonna bang okay. the grandma. Okay. I was gonna bang the grandma. Okay, gonna bang. I'm I'm gonna just you know, I'll, I'll keep that to myself. Hopefully, I don't have to report you to. Fucking- yeah. <laughs> is it really am I really a pedophile if it's actually a hag in a forest? <laughs> uh, uh, but this 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 creature, this like long uh, you know that, uh, that has an extra section to the arm by the way. Uh, so there's like a bicep section, a forearm section, and then another section and then a wrist with the hands on it. Uh, very, very strange, almost spider-like features to it. Uh, and she kind of leans over and Peter just just uh, uh, standing still in place, like frozen with fear. Uh, she kind of rests one clawed hand into Peter's back uh, and just kind of pushing him down into the mud where he kind of collapsed in where he fell uh, trying to charge and then just right. swipes at you with her other claw. Hold on. I just, I just didn't want to hurt you, but I was just going to use this rod to keep you in place because I knew you weren't a child. A child? A child. <laughs> Jeez, we're really scared Pogo with this one, apparently. Uh, I just, just didn't, didn't want to hurt you. I'm sorry. Uh, but just, just kind of do pushing, you know, using Peter like to, to, you know, to balance her weight, uh, pressing down with her left arm, she just swipes at you with her right arm for a 17. Does that hit? It does not hit. 17 does not uh, hit? No. All right. Uh, so you jump out of the way, splashing into the mud, uh, diving out of the, the range of her, her swipe, um, and we will need to take a quick break here, guys, while I yep. set something up. Um, yeah, I didn't fair. have all this prepared, so uh, give me give me a few minutes to get a, <laughs> I'm gonna a go to the. To go. I'm gonna go 
take a leak and uh, contemplate my decision making abilities. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Give me, give me probably maybe ten minutes at the most, guys. Okay. All right. All right. <sighs> Anyone still here? Hanging out? I am. Cool. Kind of uh, the good news is I'm in the forest with Peter. So yeah, I'll be fine. Technically alone. <laughs> Nah. Hope that saddle doesn't get fucked up. <laughs> oh, that would suck. I'm glad. So, so the way I see it, though, I can't be that far away from the group. I got to be pretty close. I think you said we were like 200 feet away. Yeah, not that far away. Plus, it screamed, um, so we heard it. Yeah, yeah. I just screamed. I screamed through our little. Rocky talkies, so you guys just probably got like that weird. It was probably super loud, like where you guys got like a, a reverb like, feedback. <laughs> yeah, feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's ears like, oh fuck, man! I thought that was going to be a cool little plan. A movable rod, this thing. It would have been Thor's hammer. It a seventeen doesn't hit. Yeah, that's that's unnerving. Mm, yeah. <laughs> She warned you that there was a woods witch out there. <laughs> hey, I mean, at least it didn't. At least we didn't like get into its house, which is probably like a mouth or a prison or something. <laughs> uh, she probably wants to put us in an oven and bake us. <laughs> oh, dude, I haven't been baked in days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to this beholder joke. Frickin' import thing from uh, uh, D&D Beyond. Beyond. Yeah, isn't working. 
I'm gonna have to manually put. You know, I like. Building stats in. You know, like I never use that. I, I use just it all don't. The time. I just don't. I like it's easier. Or I don't know. So, you know, sometimes people get in their own habits of doing stuff. Like I'm, I am still a uh, copy paste guy. I'm not a. Um, uh, uh, what is it where you can just do like? I'm not a texter guy. Is that what the app's called? Where texter, you like just type in like three letters and it autofills what you have saved as that um, chunk oh, of text. Yeah, no, I, I don't do that either. I'm I, a I copy mean, I, paster. I, I don't use texter. Like, yeah. Uh, even though it's easier for some people. Are you talking about like just text prediction? Like textra? The app textra? Uh, well, we use one for work. We have an option to use a program called texter, which okay. is pretty much. The, with it. Well, it's pretty much the same thing. That's a, one of the things that you can do with it. Mm -hmm. um, but it also like you could be like um, hot key stuff. So shift shift A would automatically put in like you know something that you decided that was going to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know whatever it happens to be. Um, Just using hot keys for for everything. Yeah, yeah. Instead of copy paste, so they you have like maybe uh, maybe like shift D F. You hit them all at the same time, and it like loads up the. I don't know. Hi, welcome to Olive Garden. I don't know what the fuck you'd be putting in there, but you know. Do, do, do. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Give me for more no, that's there. cool. I'm still working on a beholder joke. Do, 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 do. Wow, beholders have an AC of 18 and 180 hit points. You know, one of their eyeballs can just cast instant death. It's all that gaze. The the frontal cone thing is the anti magic though. That's the big. That's what makes them more of a risk. Yeah, that thing sucks. If it if it looks in your direction, if it's yeah, facing your direction, you roll, uh, it's just an anti magic cone. So yeah, if you roll a ten uh, to to see what the eyes do, mm -hmm. death ray. Creature must succeed on DC sixteen deck saving throw or take uh, fifty five necrotic damage. The target dies if the ray reduces it to zero hit points. Just straight death. Um, so I actually I didn't realize it did. Uh, 10 d 10 damage i thought it was just straight death i thought it was you saved it or you just died <laughs> i don't know if there's anything like that anymore there there definitely was for old versions apparently mm -hmm. um where they were they, they that's actually what uh uh save or die the, the, the term save or die comes from uh which is like a D and D brand that they make stuff like they make mm -hmm. merch and stuff like that uh, but anyways I think that's uh, what's his name? Damn it, um, guy from like True Blood and stuff. He's a big D and D guy. Uh, uh, I know you're talking about the werewolf, the sexy werewolf. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen the show, but the he's the a guy sexy the, fucking werewolf. Uh, Joe something. Shit. Yeah, Man Manganiello or something. Yeah, 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 yeah Joe yeah, Manganiello. Yeah, Joe, Joe Manganiello. Yeah, Manganiello. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'll give you a golf clap for that one, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that's his brand, if I remember it. Yeah. Yes. Did you guys know that there is a creature that has eight eyes, this fat, bulbous monstrosity, and it can hurt you, paralyze you, or put you to sleep? But enough about my ex-wife. <laughs> That's the best you came up with? Oh, I'm sorry. Come up with a better uh, uh, beholder joke in 12 minutes. Hey, I didn't say I could do it. You you said that you were going to do it. That's on you. That's not on I me. Think, I think that's a good one for a beholder. <laughs> Uh, someone give me another. Someone give me another rando uh, D and D creature type thing. Um, hang on, let me look at the list. Oh, that's a beast list. Hang on. Yeah, beasts are just normal animals, so they're no fun. <laughs> Do eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Does have to be an America joke. <laughs> We are a joke, man. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Especially after today. Uh, I mean, everyone knew it was going to happen. Like, it's not yeah. any kind of a surprise. Yeah. But it, 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 honestly, the build up, just knowing it's not going to happen anyway, is still fucking annoying. Like, it was yeah. like an extra week of me being mad at something that hasn't happened yet, but knowing <laughs> it was going to happen. Yeah. There's something called an old croaker. <laughs> old croaker. <laughs> 
All right, I'll look that up, see what the fuck that is. Oh, it looks like it's a magical toad. Oh, it sounds like a hypno toad or something. Yeah, big old toad. Dude, how random is this to where this doesn't even have a picture for it? It's like a <laughs> generic, like... <laughs> Apparently it's from the... Ex oh, it's the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount. That's why. Mm. That was that thing they fought in the beginning, right? With the circus? What thing? An old the croaker. old croaker. I remember. The big toad that they fought with the circus. Literally on, like, the first, the first episode of uh, Critical Role. Yeah, the I don't know. I, I I fell off too much. I'm I'm too far behind. I'm not going to bother trying to catch up. Honestly, it's just it's it's a shame because I I mean I really love the first season, but the characters in the second season just don't really kind of hook I me should, at all. I I didn't listen to the first season, and it was because like you were like, well, the video quality is terrible. It's really hard to watch. The audio quality is really bad. Yeah, but like I'm not watching anymore. I just listen to it on the rare occasions. Honestly, it's it's only bad for the first you know what 10 or something episodes so yeah. and they're still listenable it's just you know there's a lot of like over talk because the mics were not very good but it's it's um, to me a much better story and the characters were, were infinitely more interesting i don't know this season's getting pretty good i I'm, I, I know a lot of people love it and i'm happy they do because I, I mean i want every bit for them to ex succeed in, in you know everything that they do um so i'm glad for that it's just it's not hooking me unfortunately there's been plenty of good moments that just, you know, the characters just are not something I'm very interested or Sam, uh, invested in. Sam Regal is, like, fucking hilarious. Well, that's I, part I'm of the reason that you so need much. to see the first season so much, because <laughs> the end of the end of the first season is uh, has some incredible moments specifically because of Sam. Mm. Yeah. He has a 70s mustache now. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's quarantine, baby. I, I, can, I can picture that. Yeah, I can picture it's that on quarantine. I've got, my hair is, like, almost long enough for a man bun. It shit's outrageous. <laughs> I've actually, yeah. Yeah, bright blue hair and a 70s mustache do not go. Nice. Almost done, guys. Since I have to fucking manually build this, uh, it's just taking a little longer. Sorry to keep you waiting. Have you ever heard of a, an old croaker? <laughs> it's this giant frog monster that can swallow an entire man. And usually, we have to pay extra for that. <laughs> All right, that was better than the other one. <laughs> I get really disappointed when I look up like puns for things, and the puns are just so bad. Like they don't, like they're just not, like not bad punny wise. Like you know, how bad puns are still fucking funny because they're so stupid. They're just <laughs> bad because they just basically don't make enough sense. Yeah. Like, ugh. or they just they just use a word that rhymes kinda, and I'm like, well, okay. This isn't really how a joke works, but like we uh, a fun game me and Leah like to play uh, non sexually is when we're laying in bed at night non sexually, we just try to come up with random things and then make jokes about them. So last night we were we were making jokes about Olympics, and I had one that was I thought was pretty good. It was like, uh, um, uh, why do people hate? the people why do why does everyone hate everyone who's in the winter olympics because they're a bunch of losers <laughs> and here's the problem i've heard on the spot joke that's good leah yeah. didn't know that the luge was a thing she was like <laughs> she had no idea and i was like what she, she's like i don't i don't know what what are you talking about that's <laughs> so, the line of good taste. so this is what's funny. I explained to her what it is, and she was like, no fucking way that exists. So I'm like, it's literally <laughs> a person that lays on their back on a fucking, like, old-ass-looking... Yeah, well, we used to do it yeah. on skateboards, yeah. Yeah, that's what and we used it, to do in Auburn. Yeah. Yeah. But it literally looks like... it's It looks like one of those old sleds, and they just fucking go 90 miles an hour yeah. <laughs> through ice tunnels. And I explained that. She's like, you're making that up. <laughs> and then I showed her the skeleton, and she's... 
like the skeleton if anyone's not sure is is the exact same thing but you do it head first like an absolute psychopath what you've never seen skeleton because skeleton is way less popular because i imagine 90 percent of the people do it suicide die wish? within the first three months yeah. so it's the exact same sport head first on your stomach that sounds very <laughs> stupid yeah. I mean, on the plus side, they make zero dollars a year. Yeah, exactly. I mean, why yeah. Not? <laughs> Who's your sponsor? The AMPM on Madison Avenue, because no <laughs> one does this sport. I get I get paid in talkies. Well, they could get sponsored by funeral homes, yep, cremation or something like that. You know, because they're going to use them anyway. So yeah. Yeah. that's actually probably an amazing idea. <laughs> yeah. I want to. I want to see like uh, a UFC fighter come out, and all their sponsors are just like, like uh, medical companies that do like concussion <laughs> awareness and shit, like yeah. Tylenol, Ace bandages. Anyone got another uh, random creature? Might as well do one for a griffin. <laughs> All right. Let me go ahead and bring everybody over to this map. Nazim finally says something and. And I talk right over him. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Fox? I haven't heard you in a while. Are you doing all right? Feeling okay? Mm. Oh, I don't <laughs> think Fox is feeling great. It's not very talkative tonight. No, the headache's been pretty bad this week. Because of the snow and everything, or, or unrelated? I don't know. Could be. The weather does affect it some, but it's just really horrible right now. Yeah. All right, everybody go ahead and give me initiative. Sorry that took so long. That's okay. I got to refresh my page. It kicked me out. Okay. Uh, by the way, whatever Becky and Ben are doing this week, it has been working fantastically. Yeah, so far you guys sound fine. Knocked on some wood there. <laughs> <laughs> it's particle board, but I think it counts. Yeah, I think you guys only cut out a couple of times when we first started up, and that was about it. So. Probably when I was loading the maps and everything. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Uh, do we have an active? Do we have an active combat thing yet? Oh, sorry. Let me put you guys That's in okay. one. Here you go. Let me turn that down a little bit. What in the hell? There we go. Music level okay. Yeah, it keeps saying it can't reach the page. Uh, yeah, I don't see you connected. We'll give it a second. Yeah, let me just try refreshing again. I'm not on the combat track for some you gotta, reason. You gotta add yourself to it. Right click on yourself and then the token in the bottom, or the icon in the bottom right. Yeah, but it's not there either. Oh, there I we just go. added you. Yeah, I just added there. you. And I'll do the same for Sai here real quick. Uh, Nazim's in there, so it's just Becky. Um, the... If you want to roll for me, you can. It looks okay. like it's trying to load in. Okay. I knocked on wood. What else can we do? <laughs> yeah, really. You, you jinxed it. <laughs> Both you and Nazim got a five. Yeah. Winning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, the the hag-like creature, uh, the name of which was called Buer, by the way, Sarah, uh, the, the the woods witch out here, the the, the hag that you had heard uh, the children's tales of, uh, was called Buer, um, has just uh, kind of smushed uh, uh, Peter into the mud a little bit and then swiped at Pogo, having missed. In fact, I would say, Pogo, you probably, you know, kind of jumped out of the way a little bit to be able to avoid that, so I'll put you one step back a little bit. Just that you're not, you know, immediately within 
uh, her, her reach. Although I'll tell you that her arms are extremely long and sure. those talons look very sharp. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you that her reach looks like it's still quite f much further than you know a creature of her size might otherwise be. Um, Ten feet? Uh, well, you you guys are too far. I'm going to say that you guys are just coming out of the woods, basically, uh, on the top right, if you can see yourselves on the map there, um, that you guys are just stepping out of the woods enough to be able to see this after Pogo had shrieked, and uh, you, you guys are just kind of able to see him through, you know, through the other side of the trees. Um, you know what, though? Uh, so remember how I mentioned the whole trees being, uh, you know, plenty of the trees being chopped over or chopped mm -hmm. over? Yeah, I just happened to find literally. Like, I literally had to find this map just you know Some five minutes ago, and, and I found. I happened to find one that had fucking stumps of trees. I mm. thought that was pretty cool, and it's raining and everything. Um, anyway, uh, so she has has just uh, lashed out at Pogo, who has leapt away. Um, the uh, oh, never mind. I won't tell you that part. All right, uh, Griffin's turn. Peter's turn. Uh, okay, uh, I am just going to telepathically tell Peter to. Um, try to get away and come basically pick me up so that I can just kind of fly basically down. Um, actually, you know what? Nope. I'm going to have uh, Griffin go ahead and just do his multi-attack. Uh, one with his beak. Okay. For 15. 15 will not hit. Okay. And one with his claws. Uh, that one will. So Thank God. Uh, he, 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 you see him because he's still kind of smushed down into the mud a little bit, and you see him reach his beak around and just try to tear into her hand, uh, but he can't quite reach into her back with it, uh, and and able to kind of to, to spin over to the side. Now he's kind of pinned down, uh, you know, pushed into the lion flank into the side of the lion as he's pushed into the mud uh, and rakes at her with his claws, uh, tearing into her arm for a little, uh, not very much. Uh, doesn't appear to have hurt her very much. She doesn't even really seem to react. She's still kind of trying to hold him down. Um, is she like holding him down to where he can't get away? Like I was gonna have him fly away. Uh, he can at half movement. He can he can get away from her with half movement. Okay. Um, then I oh I get it. Cause he was uh, he was actually prone. Yeah. Um, what is his thirty feet movement? Uh, fly is I think sixty. Oh yeah, because you deleted. I was just stats. gonna have him. Well, I deleted oh, some. I, I, I just redo it. I can fine. look it up real quick. I have it in in here anyways for the regular Griffin stats. They are. Oh shit! You deleted it from there I somehow. I did. <laughs> uh, I'm right. just going to have him here. I'll, I'll literally look it up real quick. It just takes a second. I think it's 60 feet, but I want to double check. I'll put him back in there too. Oh, it's fly 80 feet. So I'm just going to have him fly 20 feet up and 20 feet away, risking taking damage uh, to the uh, north. So if he makes it without dying, it would be five, ten. 15 so right about here at about 20 feet up okay uh as soon as as uh he tries to kind of pull himself out from under her claws uh you see this this elongated jaw this is very um uh like a scare like a uh, scary movie not scary movie uh what's the one i'm thinking of with a long jaw mask you know what i'm talking about the white mask scream scream there you go the, the how the how the jaw is kind of down like much too far down and, and uh, elongated. Uh, she leans down and just tries to tear into his neck, trying to bite into him. My secret, get her to use her reaction quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the plan, everybody. Ooh. Uh, well, that's for everybody else, actually. Oh. Uh, um, then for the attack roll. Is that if it eats one of us? Yeah, like that's, uh, that's if it's able to... Well, with a 29, I, I imagine that'll that's going to hit. That'll definitely hit. <laughs> when there's no modifier. Let's see, let's see if he's alive. 27. Ah, he's still alive, I think. She she tears a chunk off of his shoulder, just, just tearing the flesh uh, away from this uh, you know semi-spiritual being, uh, and is just, just spray... You're immediately just covered in this kind of arterial splash. Uh, of blood pogo uh and uh peter shrieks and kind of t pulling himself away you see the you know the muscle still tearing free from the shoulder as he as he tries to to get himself separated he does get away from her uh and then up over here uh but it's just pouring blood down out of the shoulder uh do you have access to remove 27 hit points yep he's down yep. to 36 he has 63 so he's got a decent he's got a decent amount of hit points cool all right then we come to artemis turn Okay, uh, I guess I'll move a bit Sorry closer. Sorry I made this thing mad! I was really not trying to hurt you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just wanted to hold you down. 
Oh, actually, so since you did see her bite that, though, you have to make a wisdom check. Or wisdom save, Justin. DC 15. Got it. You guys, the rest of you are just barely able to see this. Nope. I'd say that you're Fail. too far away to be able to. All right. Then in that case, you are frightened of her. Okay. Uh, and you are incapacitated. Can't understand what others are saying. <laughs> can't read. Speak only in gibberish. <laughs> uh, and your movement is erratic. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to move here and that's it. Okay. Uh, creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns. All right. That's funny, and the fear one actually looks like that mask kind of anyways. All right, then we come to Sai's turn. Fox. Oops. She's just going to stay behind. Okay. Sorry. She's staying. She's me. staying. No, you're fine. She's going to stay yeah. back there where she was. Okay. Yeah. All right, then we come to Noroch's turn. Okay. Start moving in that direction. Good dash. Okay. Okay, and actually, yeah, I'm not gonna do my usual one rage yet, just in case I don't get whacked. So, um, yeah, well, I, I just have one action. I can just only hit multiple times, but it's still just one action, right? So yeah. I still that would be okay. Then that's it. Yep. No bonus so actions then. Uh, no, I'm gonna. You action to dash. Right. So okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So and then we come to. Quicker. All right. Then we come to Pogo's turn. So can end of your turn, you can reroll. Well, yeah, it's a DC yeah. 15. Yeah. End of your yeah, turn. I, <laughs> and with a 10, still uh, just uh, in, if, if terrified of her after seeing this kind of blood splatter uh, of her eat, trying to eat half of your griffin. Uh, then we come to Nazim. Okay, I'm going to move here, 30 feet. Um, and uh, I'd like to cast Magic Circle. Okay. Uh, magic circle, but before I do so, can I just shout out to the team something really quick for a response? Yeah, it's, it's, it's talking, as long as it's not a full sentence and everything, then it's free action, yeah. All right. Does everyone have ranged weapons? Or ranged attack? I think we all have at least something. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast magic circle on the... Uh, Burr, burr. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to cast it in a way where it's reversed, uh, reverse direction. The creature can't willingly exit the cylinder. It's a 20 foot tall cylinder by 10 foot radius. Okay. By non magical means. So essentially, I'm blocking her in. Okay. Uh, creature so tries to use teleportation, interplanar travel. It must succeed on a charisma save first. Okay. Okay. And then. Uh, I just Ooh, click it. I want to read it. <laughs> Yeah, click the, uh, if you, there you go. There you go. Okay, um, did it give you the option for, like, place the template and everything? Uh, no, I'm not sure how to do that. I'm okay. Cast this Sometimes one. it does it automatically. Uh, there's, there's a, there's a yeah. checkbox for it, so did you already consume the spell slot when you clicked it, or no? Uh, now I just clicked it, and it says, uh, cast it, level. Yeah, so slot. cast at level, leave it, yeah, that's your pack slot, so go ahead okay. and leave it at level 5, and leave the box check for consume spell slot, and leave the box check for place measure template, and gotcha. then click cast spell, and then it'll give you a circle that you can drop, oh, there you go. And, and you can go ahead and drop that on, there you go. There, and, perfect. Okay. Uh, Alright, then, you, the, the well, the few of the two, they're still in the back, Pogo can't quite see this, but Nazim, uh, are you still in, in fa uh, farmer form, or have you dropped that? I think now since we've had long rest, it's it's been dropped now. Well, you it's been a, you had a short, short rest since then, another sleep, but yeah, okay. Yeah, All right, then still in his normal form, then maybe floating off the ground out of the mud, uh, floats forward uh, and holding both hands out, still kind of you know holding the spear and leaning it against himself. Uh, he he holds both hands out, and you see this uh, this circle of of a kind of spinning, swirling uh, uh, lines kind of appear on the ground, uh, just knocking the the rain away in this circle, kind of creating this this cylinder uh, around her. Uh, she kind of shrieks and then and then pulls black still still just dripping this blood with these overly elongated almost crab like arms uh, kind of flailing in, in place looking like she's she's angry and frustrated uh, at, at whatever this trap must be any bonus actions uh, not at this time okay um, it's an it automatically succeeds ex until they like there's basically no roll until they try to leave it looks like uh, yeah the reverse direction. 
from leaving the cylinder and protecting targets outside of it. Okay. All right. Uh, then we come to Sarah. All righty. So I'm going to... I'm moving diagonally so I can get a little bit farther, but I want to go... Here. Okay. And then... Because that's... Yeah, that's within 120 feet, right? Yeah. Exactly. All right. So... This person, this is sort of, unless, she, unless this thing can teleport or cho- change planes, is like fucking stuck. Okay, I'll still. Kind of neat. Mm, wait, what does it do if I do it at second level? Okay, so. Go, go, get ready to Dutch oven. I'm going to do this at <laughs> second level. Get ready, get That I get an extra D6 of damage. I don't know if it does it automatically or not, but. Okay. Uh, 25 will hit. Almost. Yeah, it looks like I did it. And then it's... What are both the D8s? I don't know what the D8s were. Uh, we haven't rolled the damage yet. Didn't it just... No, I don't see... At least I didn't see the damage rolls yet. Did you roll a D8 to determine the type? And it looks like you just got... <laughs> you just dropped out. Yep. Because it rolled it on my side. Okay. Did you see uh, what it was? Can you click it? Man. Damage. If it lets you click it, I'll just I'll use whatever you rolled, but I can make click it on. re-roll it. Okay. So there you go. Uh, looks like they're both twos. So whatever okay. two is. Two for chaos. Cold is, damage. Yeah, it's cold. All right. Okay. And. Uh, no, I don't want to use it. That's it. Okay. Uh, then stepping forward, seeing uh, uh, as Nazim is, is kind of drawing these uh, uh, arcane sigils in the air and these circles begin, or the, these uh, lines rather, begin to spiral up around her, you send off a, a ball of freezing energy that impacts her square in the right shoulder uh, and, and erupts and explodes around her. And she kind of looks in your direction and, and gives you a, 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 an evil stare, but she does not look to be hurt in the least Shit. by the impact. Okay. Bonus actions? No, that's it. All right. Pogo's going to let everyone know that and go, Yeah, <laughs> Well, it was very nice of you to let them know. Uh, she is then going to, uh, it's feeling herself kind of stuck in this circle. She's going to uh, uh, <coughs> lean forward between these spinning cir- uh, 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 bits. Imagine it like, um, let's see, Justin, Ben... And Sako will get this. The old uh, Final Fantasies, when they would cast the hold magic on them, it would be like the little lightning bolts that would spin around them. Oh, there. okay. Okay, uh, kind of like that. There's like, you know, a slight space between, but she's not able to get out of it. Reaching through them like bars, she reaches out to immediately just grasp her hand around Pogo's neck. Uh, her hand is much larger than his whole upper, you know, his whole body, and grab him to yank him inside of this circle with her. Uh, it will be a disadvantage for Pogo okay. because he's incapacitated. Uh, um, go ahead and give me a. Actually, it's a, a deck save. But don't you automatically fail when you're incapacitated? Uh, maybe. I have to double check. Uh, can't take actions or reactions is all I'm reading on there. But frightened has disadvantage on ability checks. Um, I can't move any closer, so that doesn't say. I think it's just disadvantage. A paralyzed. Incapacitated. Par- is the if one I'm looking at. Uh, yeah, you're not paralyzed. You're just incapacitated yeah. by the fear. Oh, I think it's just. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, give me, give me a deck save with disadvantage then. Okay. One more time because I forgot to click the thing. That's fine. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Fourteen will still, <laughs> yeah, or thirteen rather will still oh, grab doesn't you. Doesn't matter. Uh, she she grabs of just around your like not not trying to squeeze your neck, just picking you up basically by the shoulders I'm with her large hand. Too far away to have him re-roll, aren't I? Or no shit, it's the same day. I don't have any. Never mind. It's 30 feet, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're, I think, oh, actually, the, for the chronal one, I'm not sure. Uh, for the uh, luck one, is 30 feet. But uh, grabs Pogo and yanks him inside, uh, inside of the, the magic circle then. Uh, she is a fae, by the way, so literally the magic circle actually works on, like, fays and undeads and celestials and shit. Uh, if she, had she just been, like, a normalish creature, it wouldn't have had the same kind of impact. Um but yanks him in and is immediately going to bite into him like she did for the uh, biting into the griffin. 
which, hang on, is a... That's a pogo apple. Uh, six, uh, 26, rather. <laughs> That'll hit. Okay. Uh, no modifiers, uh, I so it could I be low. Use, I can't use actions or reactions either, so... Uh, 22 as she okay. bites into Pogo. Uh, Nazim, actually, all four of you. Uh, concentration check for Pogo. What did you, sure. did, did you have uh, something up? No, I just clicked something randomly. Okay. Oh, did I? No, I don't think I did. I, we've been having weird issues with the concentrator thing. Yeah, it like it, that, that add-on probably, probably needs to be updated or something. I'll take a look at it. Yeah, uh, I don't nope, think you I have anything else. Okay, all right. Uh, 22 damage to Pogo. Uh, all four of you can see this now. So uh, DC 15 frightening or er, uh, uh, wisdom check for Norok, Artemé, Nazim, and Sarah. Okay, I'm still loading in. Wisdom. But... Uh, DC I 15 get... wisdom. Yeah. What, Becky? For frightened, I get advantage if you want to roll it. For oh me. shit. Okay. Uh, that's fucked up. But I I realized I had advantage, but I'm not gonna worry about it now. It's, that's way too far back. Um, that was my what? fault. On what? I'm being frightened. I have halfling. Uh, brave. Uh, brave. Oh, brave. Bravery. Okay. But that's okay. Too far back. I'm not worried okay. about it. Okay. Uh, still would have failed, Becky. Thirteen. Uh, with disadvantage. With 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 advantage as a thirteen. With disadvantage would have been a five. Uh, Artemis succeeds, and Azim succeeds. I just need one from Norok. Doesn't seem to be rolling when I click on it. I think Justin cursed you guys. Have you tried yeah. clicking on stuff? Guys, I knocked on wood. I did everything I could. <laughs> I, can just roll a, I can just roll a 20. It's, a, it's plus 5. I just I did it for you. It's an 18. Okay. Uh, right. I just rolled it. Uh, but I think you get advantage on it, too, if I remember right. Don't you have something against being feared from your feral instinct or something? I'm, like not, that? I'm so. not raged. If I was oh, raged, I'd be feared at all. Oh, but I'm okay. Not raged, so. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So uh, then Sarah and Pogo are the only two, right? Yeah, everybody else succeeded. Uh, and that is it for her turn. It is the Griffin's turn. So you can't <sighs> communicate to him because you're just nope. murmuring unintelligibly, but you know you can still kind of give you know a, a sense of what he would do. Uh, I'm gonna say because he loves me so much, he'd probably <laughs> just come to attack the hag. Okay. So he just. All right. Then he the will. Hag. Uh, yeah, just just uh, from from where he was far enough back, kind of dipping his haunches into the ground, flaps his wing to launch himself forward uh, to bite. Is it bite and claw that he gets? Yeah, he gets multi-attack. Okay. <gasps> Big money is not going to do it there. Well, we'll not do it. And... Patoo! There that we will. Go. Okay. Um... Pogo, you can still see this. You just can't really react, so you're still, you know, terrified. But to, uh, she doesn't. It, it, I mean, he raked his his claws into her, uh, into her arm, and it doesn't seem like it hurt her as much as it sure. ought to have. Um, everybody understands what I'm saying, right? Okay. And if you didn't, Pogo turns around and goes. <laughs> <laughs> She was going to move to the middle of the map, but now she's stuck in this corner from the circle. <laughs> so, so now the whole fight's going to be like on the very edge here. Pogo's right. fine, guys. He's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's just being eaten alive by the by the It'll hag. Be all right. Artemis' turn. All right, I'm going to move a tiny bit closer. Okay. Here, and then I'm going to cast uh, Wrath of Nature onto the enemy. Okay, what's that do? Stay Breath of nature. This way, to just avoid uh, the griffin. Okay. Let me read how this one works here. I, I'm calling out to the spirits of, like, the nature to attack enemies, so... Um, the spears cause trees, rocks, and grasses in 60-foot cubes centered on the point uh, to become animated until the spell ends. Uh, so right now it'd be more like uh, rocks and some vines and stuff from this terrain. Okay. Oh, yeah. A uh, cube must succeed on a strength save or become restrained until the spell ends. A restrained creature uh, can try to resist, well, can try to break itself off and end the effect. Uh, what's the damage roll, though? Oh, the rocks, then? You're doing rocks? Yeah. Loose rock in the cube to launch any creature you can see within the cube. Make your range spell attack. Okay, so it's not all of them. You, you pick one of those, then. So you're just doing the rock one is when you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, choose a point you can see. Well, it actually looks like it 
it's not saying pick one of these effects, so it can do the rock as well as the others, it looks like. Uh, range spell attack can target on a hit. Target takes 3d8 non-magical bludgeoning damage and must succeed on a strength saver but fall prone. Alright. Where's the 4d6 coming from? Yeah, it's, it's the 3d8 anyways, which was 19, so that's still a big hit there. I don't know what the 46 is in the, in the math. I show don't up. know. Yeah, it doesn't show up anywhere else in the spell. Uh, but it has to make a... That, I'm, I'm going to assume that that's also probably halved. Uh, well, it's it's damage types, so you'll, yeah. you'll see in, in a moment here. But uh, it would be... Uh, you know what? Actually, the rock itself isn't magical, yeah, although it is it is animated. I was going to say, yeah. sure, it says it's non-magical. Okay, yeah. gotcha, okay. All right, uh, on a target, uh, was a 31 was the hit. Yeah, 31's the hit. No, 31 would be the damage. Go ahead and roll a d20, Fox. And I'll add your spellcasting modifier. Uh, you rolled two, but uh, even with a 15, it would still hit. Uh, so uh, it does take... The, so the the ground uh, begins to kind of uh, come alive in the space around there. The stumps begin to kind of stretch. The, it looks like they're, they're kind of lifting themselves up, beginning to stretch themselves out of the roots uh, of the ground. And a, a rock uh, that the stump is, is kind of the nearby stump that is sitting next to uh, uh, goes flying off in its direction as if it had thrown it uh, and impacts the, the bure in the side of the head, uh, doing 19 damage. Uh, actually, sorry, halved, because it was non-magical. Uh, for... there we go. Um, and for that one, it is a strength save to not to try to knock it prone. I'm going to move back a bit, and there we go, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, strength save 11, shit. Okay, so you did not succeed on the strength save, so the, the rock impacts her. Uh, and still holding Pogo and, and just having ripped into his shoulder uh, where she's bit into him, uh, the, the, the rock kind of pegs her in, in the side of the head and she goes crumpling off to the side, not knocked unconscious, but certainly uh, losing her balance and dropping Pogo to the ground. Uh, still inside the circle, but no longer, <laughs> no longer pinned and is now knocked prone. There we go. And that is it for Artemis' turn. So now we come to Sai's turn. She's just going to stay there still. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Then we come to Norok. Okay. The grass and the ground in front of you uh, is difficult terrain for your enemies, actually. So it doesn't even affect you. It looks like you're able to just go on through. Yeah. It. That's why I, I picked that spell. It seemed interesting, and it didn't affect friendlies. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just keep chucking fucking rocks at this thing too, or does it keep lasting, or is it like a one-time thing? No, it keeps lasting for the duration. Nice. Yeah, it is concent uh, concentration effect as well. Yeah. So. Just relax, chucking rocks at this fucker. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to pin them and, you know, making yeah. it difficult terrain. And uh, enemies within 10 feet of any tree must succeed on a dex. That's where the 46 is. If they're within 10 feet of a tree, they must succeed on a dex save or take 46 slashing from whipping branches. Mm hmm. Yes, it's a very neat spell. It uses, like, everything. Yeah. Uh, is it branches? Or stone? No, or it doesn't. It doesn't say pick. It's. It looks like it's all of those effects because it doesn't say choose oh. any of these. It's just yeah. basically if if she's not near a tree, like right now, she's not really near a tree. So that one wouldn't help. But the grasses and undergrowth do. The roots and vines oh. do, and the rocks do. I'm calling a ton of nature spirits to literally animate the world around them and attack. So it's plural spirits. Uh, yeah. Is that just a big old bush right next to her? Yeah. Yeah. Just underbrush. Yeah, this area that's you know, this area is mostly cleared out except for the the area that you just came from. This Fair. is her kind of housing area. Remember you you landed like near the house, so uh go ahead, G. What are you doing? How do I uh, or can I switch um, Vulcan to throw it, or should I just roll and you can, you know, adjust for me? Uh, instead of using melee, you know, throw Yeah, it's still it's still the same uh attack roll. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a 17 will not hit. Just barely misses. Yeah, Vulcan okay. flies flies past her. Uh, nearly goes goes missing in the uh, uh, into the brush on the or into the uh, clearing behind her. Uh, and then you just yank it back, summoning it back to your hand. I'm going to bring it back, and with the the throne, I just get one attack, right? Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to rage, and then I'm going to call it good. Okay. Ch -ch 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 -ch. 
Yeah, that's it for me. Okay, then now we come to Pogo. Bought it! Hey, there you go. Yeah! You, well, you rolled it from the Griffin, actually, but your wisdom is uh, higher than plus nope, one, I assume. Mine is not. Mine is lower. It's <laughs> less than plus one? Plus zero. <laughs> oh, shit. So, let me Never just double mind. check, but I'm yeah. almost positive. Here, I'll just roll another one, but just I'm almost positive it's a plus zero. And it was just a natural one, anyways. Just the rolls. <laughs> yeah, it's a plus it zero, plus so zero. I would have gotten a 14. <laughs> All right. Well, Pogo is still being, uh, you know, he's still he was dropped so to the end of the mud. But what's that? Out of curiosity, since I do have halfling brave, mm -hmm. can I do a? Is, is this being frightened or is this actually being paralyzed? Or no, is it like, just, this is against the frightening effect. So, so can yeah. I roll it with advantage? Since yeah, I have yeah. Right. Yeah, you definitely should be. I missed it you on should, the other ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you definitely you definitely can't hear for sure. I mean, you should have on the first one too. But even even after missing that one, you, you well, in that case. Hear. I already have one right there. There's a second one that I just. Yeah, that's did. true. That's a 15. That's fair. Yeah, that your second roll was a 15, which is enough. So, uh, you managed to after being you know dropped down into the mud, you fall because she's quite large. She's, she's you sure. know 12 feet tall. Uh, but after dropping you very far into the mud, uh, you know not taking any damage, you kind of <coughs> kind of roll just just a little bit. Is oh. enough to kind of shock you awake. Oh, oh I don't think this thing has a dog. <laughs> Pretty sure. Oh. And that's the end of my turn. Okay. <laughs> she did. She did try to lead you guys away from her home and like you know get her to no, leave. No, I get it. But... It was literally not in the battle was supposed to happen, but people right, need we to come be to sometimes. <laughs> Up to Nazim. All right. Uh, just a quick question. My travel is thirty feet. Is that correct? And if I yeah. dash, that's sixty feet. Correct. It would take your action to dash, but yeah. Okay. So my movement would be used. My action would be used. And may I use a bonus action at that point? Yep. Perfect. All right, Pogo, brace for impact. What? What are we talking about? <laughs> All right. I will move here. I will dash, moving 60 feet in the direction of Pogo. Okay. As I reach Pogo, within 30 feet right here, mm -hmm. I will target Pogo, and I will cast Psychic Shove, and I will do it uh, with no damage of course and okay. uh, he will willingly fail that safe and sure. uh, move, him 15, <laughs> move him 15 feet uh, towards uh, Norok and I. Okay. Pushing him back towards you then? We're pulling him pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. alright. Um, go ahead and click it so I can see the... I'm going to kind of go limp okay. and then let this like psychic power <laughs> as I you... slide my... I'm probably still like on the ground as like my ass slides through the fucking... <laughs> Enough. Because you because you trust Nazim so much too. I'm fucking, I'm fucking trust anyone right now. If they'll get you away from this can or this uh, this creature trying to eat you, uh, telekinetically shove one creature you can see within thirty feet. Target must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed, which you're failing on purpose. Uh, can willingly fail. So uh, if during the usage of this ability you charge five feet in the direction of the target, you can increase the push distance by an additional fifteen feet. So we're gonna push in towards us. Wave thirty feet. Yep. You can go up to thirty feet. So. Yeah, we'll push him kind of to the north of Norok, just above him. Okay. That's uh, right. 20 then... minutes above. That's 30 right there, yeah. Whee! Go to right there. Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, See, you're, being, like, you're, so you're all slimy, like on Poltergeist when they pull the baby out of the fucking TV. Well, pushed, yeah, <laughs> pushed, pushed through the mud across the yeah. ground. <laughs> through the, like he's standing, but only barely. Uh, you know, just, just through through the mud and the rain splashing off of him, if you're kind of yanked out of the out of the circle. Um, I got pulled out. What's that? Oh, I'm not gonna leave. I'm just telling oh. her that, I, that the screams <laughs> disregard the screams. He's he's only dying in the game, not in real life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, that it for Nazim's turn. Yeah. All right, now we come to Sarah. All right. So, what does her frighten do? Uh, you are incapacitated, and you so you can't you can't move closer to it, of course, because you're frightened. But basically, all you can do is try to shake the frightening, which uh, at the end of your turn, meaning you can't get do anything else, is a DC 15 Wisdom save that you make with advantage for being a halfling. And that shift, or uh, well, if you just click it, it'll give you the options for uh, advantage or disadvantage. Ah, right. uh, shit! Actually, if you do it from the hot bar, I'm not sure. Does it? Uh, nope, it just rolled it. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead and roll the second time. You're not wise either. We're the same. Nope. Oh, <laughs> uh, still babbling unintelligibly. Uh, Sarah off in the distance there. 
It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't much good in the last fight either. All right, we come back to the Buer, uh in a just a furious rage, uh, stuck in this still just just splattered in gore. You can see bits of flesh stuck between her teeth of this elongated jaw. Uh, like it looks like she can't even close her mouth, maybe in this form. Uh, but just in a, in, a, in just a, a, a rage of kind of reaching between these bars of this arcane uh, cage that she's stuck in, trying to to uh, kind of kind of scratch out there, you know, waving at you guys with her arms. Uh, best she can do is uh, reaching over to try to slash at the Griffin. Uh, nearby, his AC is twelve. So, good luck, Peter. I think our modifier is plus ten. So, I, I think that's probably gonna gonna yeah. hit. Let's see. Where's her fucking it? Oh, I didn't put it in the right place. Oh, it's under regular actions. Here we go. Claw slash. Uh, forty-eight plus ten if it hits. Uh, oh, plus tw- plus cold damage too. I didn't apply the cold damage earlier, but it's a plus twelve to hit. Jesus. Yep, that'll hit. It's well, actually yeah. I mean, if his AC is twelve, yeah, then yeah. a nineteen plus twelve will a thirty-one hit, Justin. I think. <laughs> you think what? You I, think think, so? I think Pietro might might be eating it here in a second. You can resummon him, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because forty-eight plus ten bludgeoning. Oh, that's, actually, that's supposed it? to be slashing. Well, hang on, that's thirty-one damage from the from the slash, uh, plus forty-six no. cold damage. So thirty-one. Uh, another 12, so 43 more damage. He's out. <laughs> right. uh, she uh, just just kind of rakes a claw across like across his neck, across the the, uh, the jugular, uh, just releasing a, spl- a splash of blood across the ground. Immediately, she just grips. You see the claws kind of sinking into his flesh around his neck and pulls him up to the side of the cage, pulling the beak and the head into the cage and just starts biting into the head, uh, you know, kind of halfway through the bars of the cage as the creature's just hanging <laughs> literally on the outside. What's that? No, uh, I worked ten minutes on that. Oh. <laughs> on, on summoning him. <laughs> well, Peter is currently being consumed. Uh, you guys, those of you who have already succeeded, which is everybody except for Sarah, and Sarah is still affected. So never mind. Uh, no, no further effects of the consuming. You can only be affected by it once. So we come back to Artemy. Fox. Uh, sorry. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna... Do you have to redo the thing for... Or does it automatically just go for the Wrath of Nature? Um, it doesn't really still, say. Yeah, it doesn't say that it takes an action or anything, so uh, let's see. Because it takes an action to cast, but there's no like, bonus action to it, so I guess it just uh, well, keeps the, going. The rocks one is, so the, the one that matters in this case. Basically, she's not near a tree, so that one doesn't matter, but right uh, now... Okay, I'll use part, the rocks then. Yeah, yeah well, just... that, that's as a bonus action, it says. So as a bonus action on your turn, you can cause loose rocks from the cube... Are within the cube to launch at the creature, so you can use your. Okay, I'll do, do that, that then. Anyway. Okay, go ahead and make a, or a d12 or a d20 roll, uh, plus your spell modifier, which is plus six, I think, right now or seven. That will hit. That's uh, no, twenty-four. Yeah. All right. So the rocks were three d8, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Rocks were the three d8. So. So go ahead and roll three d8. Right, so uh, unfortunately rolled low, uh, and half damage from that is three. Uh, rounding up is four, so four more damage to her as another rock pings uh, at the side of her head. But uh, she does have to make another strength save. To prevent being knocked over again. Uh, with an 11, she fails again. <laughs> is knocked prone again. Uh, and you still have your action and movement, folks. Uh, I'm just going to stay here, and that's all I'm going to do for now. Okay. No action? Just bonus action? Yeah. Okay. Most of my stuff I'd have to go uh, closer to be able to use it, and I might hit friendlies, so I'll pass on that. Sure. All right. Uh, Sai? She's just going to stay back here. Or she's going to come up to me, but that's about it. Okay. All right. I think my mouse battery's dying. All right. It is Norok's turn. Okay. Now, does it look like I can possibly jab and get uh, my sword in between the little bolts of the holding cage? For sure. Yeah, there's there's thing. enough room. Okay. Yeah, there's enough room between. Like, she's reaching an arm out through them, and her arm is, you know, bigger around than your yeah, head. Okay, fair enough, yeah. Yeah, so the, pl- the blade will definitely fit through. 
So I'm and also, the I, I'm saying bars, but what what you're really seeing are spinning, uh, like uh, spiraling circles, or like a like spirit, you know, kind of electrical magical energy that's surrounding her. It's, it. Your your yeah. sword might even pass through that. She just can't get out of it. Okay. And she uh, she's prone, correct? Yep. So you'll have advantage because she keeps getting plinked in the temple by rocks. Ooh. Okay. Um, did that roll? No, I haven't seen anything from you yet. Okay. Do you see it? Did it roll on your side? Oh, there hang on. I see. Okay, I see it now. Yeah, it just took a while. Ah, All right, okay. uh, 27 will definitely hit. Is it still charged, too? The charge doesn't last for very long, and he used oh, the charge last time. Yeah, that's, that's I think so. Yeah, gonna die. yeah. Instead of so, where most magic items like have charges that they get back every day, so basically their 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 kind of default is being fully charged. The sword is the opposite. The sword yeah. only has a charge for a short time and is usually at zero. Uh, Fifteen. Um, and was there anything else on top of that? You didn't have yeah, great weapon master great. on there, so because I, I forgot to use great weapon, so that was my fault. And that just should have been the rage damage on top okay. of that. The rage is on there. It shows a plus two. Okay. So yeah. Well, all right. Uh, Fifteen damage to her. And then this time I'm actually going to uh, frenzied rage too. So I'll just do three this time. Okay. And um, since she's still prone, that's technically an advantage on all the attacks until she gets up. Yeah. Right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> There it goes. Okay. Hey, twenty-six with that advantage, huh? Yeah. Eat. Uh, for another 16 uh, both of these these jabs you can't make wide swipes but you're kind of just just uh, you know, looking for the, the open space just trying not to risk stabbing your sword through the spirit bars um, and just jabbing into her prone uh, position uh, just tearing a wide open gash into her leg uh, and then one into her ankle as you stab the second time and both of these are just just tearing through the skin it's just instantly pouring out this very dark black blood uh, into the mud uh, but both of these seem to have done full damage for sure Okay, so I was going to say this seems more efficient than the, when the griffin was clawing at it and biting at it. Uh, it's, I mean, you guys have fought enough creatures to recognize when it's something that requires magical damage yeah, and non-magical physical damage to this, and it's also immune to cold. Uh, it may have other resistances you don't know of. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we just, I'm pretty sure we have, but just a DM question, we have fought hags before, right? So I would recognize what this thing is, right? You... Nor you guys fought trolls. You fought a couple of trolls. I don't think you fought hag. Oh, uh, yes, you have the Marathosians. Okay. Yeah. Then um, they were technically a, a hag stat block. So yes. Okay. So as a, uh, I, I did that hit. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Yeah, right. twenty twenty will hit. Okay. Uh, and then as a free action, I'm going to yell, uh, "Use fire on her," because otherwise she isn't going to die. Because if everybody remembers, you know, they won't trolls. stay dead. So. Trolls. Yeah, that's that's technically trolls, but at least the Marathosians oh, yeah, had a okay. similar. Uh, there, there's a lot of similar physiology between the two. Let's say. Okay, I thought that's the way it was with the hag too, but I could have been getting that. Well, the Marathosians may have been also. They they were a different species altogether. Technically, I just used the hag stat block uh, for for you know that's what I based them on. Basically, were, were hags, uh, but yeah, same idea. So, uh, but you did hit with all three, so you understand what that means, right? Oh yeah. So no, with the with the second that. stab, technically, uh, you know, as soon as you've stabbed it the second time, you kind of draw it back, and just before you go to to, to jab her for the third time, uh, for the length of this, you know, very long greatsword, um, you see the the pommel, the heart of the pommel, begin to, to glow and and pulse uh, with the with the hasten effect. You're going to use it for another attack. Yeah, I'm going to okay. use it then. Okay. All right. Then then as soon as you make your fourth stab, <laughs> uh, the the heart then dims, the heart and the blade dims, for another eight okay. damage to her. That will be it for me. All right. Um, she is uh, as soon as you you kind of just jab and jab and jab at her leg and her feet. Uh, she kind of <laughs> curl, she pulls her legs in, and curling up into like a fetal position, still looking up at you with this kind of crazed, elongated face, uh, uh, looking just utterly furious, but looking very wounded already at this point. Uh, come back to Pogo's turn. Oh, it's nice to be free. So this, she's obviously a very large creature, and yeah. I'm small. 
So <laughs> since she's prone, would I still have disadvantage on uh, uh, distance spells, on uh, uh, non-melee spells? I would say if you were a little bit For, like, closer. Guiding like guiding bolt? Ten, ten feet closer. Uh, guiding bolt, you'd be fine. Yeah, anything that's like a ranged spell attack, you'd be okay. If you're using an arrow or, or a you know, crossbow or something like that, I'd say you'd probably still have disadvantage without, you know, unless you got a little bit closer. But something like guiding bolt, you'd be so look, okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, look at her, and I'm just going to cast guiding bolts. Okay. But I'm going to upcast it to fourth level. And roll those dice. Yeah. Ooh, a 19 yes. will hit. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh terrible. That's 20 stu- eh, not terrible. That's 20 not still bad. okay. That's not I mean, bad. you got. That's not bad. Well, okay. That is pretty terrible. You got a one yeah. and four twos. <laughs> <laughs> and then a six out of five. I you guess it seems like it, four yeah, twos. Yeah, I mean it seems like it's better than that, but twenty twenty still is a respectable amount of damage. Uh, and then bonus action, I am going to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my usual. I'm going to cast uh, spiritual banjo directly in front of her to attack, which misses. Yep. You can go ahead and drop the banjo on the board though, if you want to. I will. Um, Any and movement? Then my, Movements. Um, I'm just gonna move and uh, no, I'll I'll uh, I'll go back. Oh fuck! I'll go back a wee ways. Okay. Stay away from her, and then uh, I'll put my banjo on the board here in a second. Sure. And that's my turn. All right. Then now we come to Nazim. Okay. Nazim Singh. Can I actually undo that movement? I just want to get. I think yeah, that's, that's fine. Further than you can put no, no, back. we're good. Okay. No, I just want to stay within 30 feet, so okay. I'm good. All right, Nazim seeing that she's uh, kind of still locked in and she's taking damage. He's kind of uh, losing grasp of reality a little bit. Mm-hmm. He's moving just below down here. Okay. And with the non-glove hand, uh, he's going to point that hand towards the uh, Bure. Bure, Bure uh, yeah. And Bure. Bure. Eldritch Bure. Blast. Okay. And uh, all beams are going to hit her directly. Okay. And uh, as he's casting that, he's going to psychotically start licking the questionable leather on the uh, <laughs> on the gloves. glove. Okay. And uh, you could tell he's not not psychologically well right now. Uh, he's going <laughs> to then project the other hand towards her and okay. cast a second Eldritch Blast. Okay. All right. So four total beams then? Yes, sir. All right. And that's going to use up my... Uh, yeah, it'll use your charge from your glove. Okay. Uh, 25 will hit. Go ahead and roll the damage for that one. There's going to be a lot of rolls. <laughs> uh, 15 damage. Uh, okay. Um, the the Bure is still laying uh, in this prone position, kind of shrieking at Norok, uh, just bleeding profusely from the legs down. Um is uh, immediately impacted by this black chain of lightning uh, that that uh, uh, one beam that Nazim sends out from one hand. Go ahead and roll the second one. Just cast it again. Yeah, just click the attack button again. You can you can do it all from the same roll. Doesn't matter as long as you do attack and then damage and then attack and then damage. It all works the same. Uh, yep. Second, the second bolt does not hit. Go ahead and click the attack again. For the then you see him casting twice from from one hand and then he holds the other hand out with the glove uh, that sends another bolt which a 19 does hit go and roll the damage for that one uh, for 12 more damage and then the last one so go ahead and click the attack button again uh, 11 will not hit so two of the four beams impacting the viewer uh, electrocuting her in place as you sit with this necrotic bolt um, still not able to stand up. Uh, she looking in the zeems in uh, you know kind of tearing the the, the uh, infuriating or the uh, uh, terrifying gaze rather from Norok. She's going to look oops look in the zeems direction, um, and you see her uh, kind of lifting one one hand up in the air as one of the the beams comes back and she spins it. Yeah. She she catches it in air and throws it back towards like Nazim as a reaction. A reaction and then okay. tropic ward. What's I do? Cast the tropic ward. Let me. It's uh, once per short rest, you can cast it to impose a disadvantage to an attack against me. Okay. <laughs> so she's using your reaction to throw the spell back at you, and you're going to use your, your uh, uh, Entropic Ward to impose disadvantage on that as also spending your reaction then. Correct. Uh, it's under your features, right? Uh, let me see here. Uh, yes. There it is. I found it. Yep. 
broadcast it, I guess. Yeah, go ahead and Sorry. click it to yeah consume resource and consume a bit. There you go. All right, for disadvantage on the attack roll. Do I need to use it on my glove as well? No. Oh yeah, you go ahead and spend the usage on the glove. Yeah. Uh, how do I? Uh, plus ten. Uh, Twenty-eight. I imagine. Oh, hang on, that was not with disadvantage. Uh, a twelve uh, plus ten. That'll twenty-two will still hit. So uh, even with the Entropic Ward, you throw it up, but the, the Black Bolt of Lightning still impacts you, the same one that you would just send at her. Uh, to D10 plus 5. Uh, for 7 damage. <laughs> and uh, not very much damage to Nazim, but at the same time, it is enough of an impact that it may shake your concentration. Uh, go ahead and give me a constant Constitution Ooh. save. Constitution Taco. save. Yep. All right. Pull that up here. If you just highlight yourself, you can do it from the bar at the top, where you click Saves and then Constitution. There you go. Uh, 15 is oh, successful. Nice. Yep. Yeah. It was only a 10 you had to beat, so... So, still 7 damage to you, uh, but... But you still, still managed to down. retain. Yeah, you still managed to keep concentration. Okay, uh, that brings you to 66. There we go. Uh, that if your turn? Yep, I'm just smiling psychotically at her now. <laughs> Alright, now we come to Sarah's turn. Uh, advantage. <laughs> and it was a one. Wait, you get to reroll the one. <laughs> and it's a 13. <laughs> uh, Becky, are you talking? Yep. Nope. Okay. I'm just going to stay over here in my corner. <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure if you were, you know, like we just couldn't hear you or if you were just too mad to actually say something. <laughs> nope. I accidentally had myself muted. I said damn it a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So now we come back around to the viewer. Uh, she is going to, uh, standing up uh, as best she can, trying to deflect the, the, the jabs from Norok as she's kind of leaning back against the kind of spirit bars. Uh, she is going to point her fingers outside of the, the circle here, uh, or, you know, kind of pointing a hand outside of it. Norok, it's like a, a tempting target where her, you know, from, from the last section of arm, like forearm is halfway out with her hand sticking out through the cage, uh, and is going to attempt to cast... Uh, a spell to extricate her from this cage. Uh, what is was this the... a? Uh, is this a? Um, so this is an attack, though, right? No. Okay. Not as far as you can tell. It doesn't appear to be. Uh, Nazim, the, this. I gotta look at the circle again. Um, I think they have to make a. Let's say. I don't get a... reactions or anything either. Nope. Do I? You, you get nothing. Shut yeah, when well, you're it. incapacitated. Yeah. Um, can't willingly... Oh, well, this is reversed. So she can't leave it by non-magical means. If the creature tries to do teleportation or interplane or travel, it must succeed on a charisma save. So let's see if she makes it. She's trying this to bitch, cast this herself out This bitch better not have a high charisma save. <laughs> let's see. <Wah. laughs> she rolled a three. <laughs> God damn it. All right. Well, she points, trying to get herself out of there, uh, un unsuccessfully reaches with her other hand uh, out towards Norok and is just going to slash as, as, uh, as brutally as she cutting can. Cutting words! <laughs> You're going to cutting words her? Okay. Cutting words. <laughs> All right. You messed with me. Yeah, you shouldn't. You should have stayed a little boy longer <laughs> thing. I was going to yell at her. I was going to have sex with you, remember? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, uh, 21. Uh, go ahead and roll your cutting words, Taco. All right, it's or, a, uh, Justin. Uh, D10, I think. Are they D10s now? now? Yeah. It's, uh, uh, yeah, I'm almost positive it's D10 here. Sounds right. I'm going to use my tribal endurance, too. Okay. So add uh, that 18. To thing. Well, no, it's the other way around. Or take that cutting, cutting words takes that from the attack roll, which makes it an 18. Yeah. I think an 18 still hits, G. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, then she rakes her claws across you. Uh, which one was the claw slash was 4d8 plus 10 plus the cold uh, but you're raging so it'll be halved alright uh, 32 halved into 16 wait why did I roll that as oh I have you selected that's why All right, so 16 damage G Okay. Uh, and then it was the cold is what 46 right 46 cold yeah Oh, that's not what I want to do. But. Uh, the ha or the cold is not halved, so 16 damage from the uh, slashing, and then 14 for a total of 30. Uh, I'll apply it for you, G. Okay. You're down to 76 uh, with her slashing at you, uh, and you're you're healing back 12 actually from your tribal endurance. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what it was. Yep. And then 
just roll a regular attack, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Pogo, you marked off one of your bardic inspiration I uses. Did. Okay. Oh, it's at sixty feet, so thirty-two. Okay. Uh, Twenty-one will hit. You're not even like rolling super high. You're still hitting. Or your modifiers aren't even super yeah. high. I mean, because you're not doing great weapon. Yeah. Uh, Fifteen damage. Yeah, it is a D10. I just want to double check it. Cool. Uh, she looks in just uh, the hand that was extended out after she clawed at you. Uh, you kind of just just step away and spin to the side to bring the the blade down, uh, severing the hand at the at the junction. You know, the 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 last elbow essentially, the second elbow, uh, and it just just falls into the mud with a splash. Uh, she shrieks and yanks the arm back away, just spraying blood everywhere out of this kind of extended arm. Uh, the, the, the stump left of it uh, and is kind of leaning away and, and shrinking away against the back of the, the cage just you know, all, all like a cornered creature like fairly uh, pulling herself against the corner that is it for her turn now we come to Artemy alright I'll just use the rocks again okay uh, bonus action and that was go ahead and roll a D, uh, d20 I'll fix that spell to put that in there for you so you can just click the buttons instead of having to manually do it. Okay. Uh, plus your eight, uh, will, or plus five rather, is 15, uh, 18, which just barely hits, so roll 46. Nazim, you keep seeing this stump nearby you uh, kind of grasping into into the mud and like like it's moving around you, hearing this kind of slopping uh, sound behind you as it's grabbing rocks and flinging them at the, at the hag in front of you for five more damage. Mm-hmm. All right. She is still up and still able to fight, but is looking in awful shape. Uh, any actions? Movement? Uh, no. All right. Now we come to Norok, then. Okay. She has shrunk away oh, from she... you, like, trying to get as far away from you as she can inside of this cage. All right. Do you want yeah. to give up? <laughs> Are these That's things important. inherently evil, guys? Does anyone know? What's, what's your name, witch lady? <laughs> you hear, Sorry, you hear um, through like an ethereal sounding filter, like a, uh, like a ghost. You know, imagine a ghost in a horror movie. Um, the boy's voice. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just. I, I don't mean to hurt anybody. Just, you, you don't kill me. If we don't kill you and we help you and heal you up, you promise not to attack us. She, check, she shrieks she, she shrieks in Norok's face, like, expecting that he's about to kill her. Uh, go ahead and, yeah, you can go ahead and roll your insight check. Right. I'm gonna wait some focus, trying to... Reroll that it. fucker! Okay. <laughs> oh, you already did reroll, Justin? The 19 yeah, is the reroll? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, you definitely don't trust her. Okay. Uh, so... All right, guys. Never mind. She seems pretty <laughs> mean. <laughs> All right then. Then I'm going to. I'm going to use great weapon this time. And um, she got up, right? Or is she still? She stand. Yeah, oh. she's standing up now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Back down, bitch. <laughs> yeah, no. Huh? Oh, I, I actually, uh, I didn't have. I forgot to have her roll the strength save to see if she got knocked down by the last stone. But with Norox three attacks, I doubt it's going to matter. Well, fourteen didn't hit, so let's try again. <laughs> <laughs> Having fucking four attacks all with advantage took like half of her health away just from, yeah. from Norok's jabs at her. Okay, obviously just to... Because she was knocked down. Yeah, she rolled it. Yep. yep. Uh, yes. Uh, that will hit. I'm going to use uh, my Tribal Fury today. Oh, hang on. Uh, you didn't have... Well, minus five would have been 21, but that, still, that would still hit, so... Go ahead. Uh, I, I can only use Great Weapon on the first one anyway. Oh, all right, never mind then. Yeah, so that just would have been been a nine on the first hit, so, yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't have worked. And then, so let's add another D6, right? Right? Yeah, because the damage dice is 2D6, so. Yeah. Jeez, and you roll max for that one, too. All right, so 22 more. Uh, She, you... uh, uh, jab in through the through the the kind of spokes of this barred cage, these horizontal bars, uh, and you jab square through this kind of elongated jaw back through the through the you know the back of her mouth. You feel like the blade may have exited. Uh, you yank it free, uh, and she kind of collapses in place. There, she's still breathing, but only barely. 
Okay, does it seem forward. like... Um, is, is she unconscious, or is she still trying to move? She's still... As far as you can tell, she's still conscious. She's, she's like, slumped over okay. and, and just barely breathing. She, she, has, she has two hit points left. <laughs> right. I thought he was gonna like have it. He's like, so like, well, maybe we should or, like yeah, yeah. talk to her or something. Yeah, but, I guess there's like, yeah. she, she's still alive. Yeah, she's got like two voices, and then he just silence yeah, he just rolls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I know my brother well enough to know yeah. what he would do with that information, but yeah, I think All probably right. most people probably would give it a moment's hesitation, but not bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, with her kind of with her kind of slumped over uh, in inside of this cage, it's kind of awkward. You can't really get like a decent swing. But how do you want to finish her off? Um, since I'm stabbing, I'm just going to try to get uh, in the center of her forehead as good as I can, okay. and then just kind of stab it in, and then just keep pushing it in to make sure it's going in. Well, actually, okay. without trying to hit the the cage, you know, I'm gonna have to. Sure. Pull the sword away. But. Okay. All right. You jab the the blade between the bars, and in at the moment that it connects with the forehead, it feels like um, like it's sinking in through between ribs almost. It doesn't feel like you're even slicing into bone, but you can feel you know resistance of what must be brain matter and the rest of the uh, you know as you pass through uh, uh, spine and so on. But it, it's like there's almost like a soft spot in the middle of the forehead where where the blade passes through, uh, and then you you kind of slowly pull it free. Uh, it's it's not even well, bleeding that much just anymore. Leave it in point. there. <laughs> Leave it in there until we know that thing's dead. Uh, she falls forward, uh, h impacting the side of the cage uh, that is still up, um, and like face kind of halfway stuck through the bars, tongue kind of half lolled out of this overly elongated jaw. Uh, no longer, like the, the the life has gone from the eyes. All right, I'm gonna remind everybody to keep an eye on this thing because it might pop back up. On fire! <laughs> yeah. I got okay. What are you guys doing? Am I still frightened? Uh, uh, actually, the moment that she passes, you're, you were watching all of this at this distance of, you know, 100 feet or something like that, uh, watching Noark just, just stab and stab and stab and watching these black bolts of lightning fly out from Nazim, uh, watching the rocks pink at her, uh, you know, from, from the, the stumps moving, and Pogo offering emotional support. Um uh, Except for a guiding bolt in the middle. But, <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, you, you watch all of this uh, just kind of terrified and unable to move. But the moment that uh, Nora kind of pulls the blade free from her forehead, uh, you are no longer frightened. Kind of shake off the chill, still being pelted with rain, but no longer frightened. Butternut! Yeah, I'm just going to walk up to her and just hit her with a firebolt. Okay. But we could skin her. Hit her with a few. Well, but you can still skin the rest of her. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you, I, I don't know if Sako appreciated this on purpose because he may not have noticed. I made sure this, like when I was putting the the magic items in there, the uh, cloak. I made it coelacanth skin. So you know, with his his fascination with having clothes made of skin, he could have a, um, a uh, you know, one made useful. of one of a uh, dinosaur fish. There's dinosaur a reason people are covered fish. in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. It is it's very useful. Nature's coat. Keeps a, keeps a lot of the, the fluids in. I'm very furry, so I have a nature's wool coat. You're very, you're a her suit. Uh, mm -hmm. what, guys, do you remember hair shirt? Anybody remember hair shirt? <laughs> yeah, what, what was that from, though? No, I can't remember yeah. the... So I hair feel... shirt, so so J Justin, like, just because of what he was just saying, but hair yeah. shirt is a, it's an old method of penance that a lot of religious people used to use where they would literally wear a shirt made out of, like, goat hair or animal hair. Sometimes people hair, but usually it was made of animal hair. Um, it was, do you know what a psyllis belt is? Like, the different, like, especially Catholics, but a lot of religions would have this kind of self-punitive measure where they would, is it they where would punish spikes? themselves. It's spikes no. on it, or they well, slap her... themselves on the back. Yeah, th those kinds of things. But that's a hair shirt. Well, no, that's just somebody that's shaved. Yeah, and is that's super me. Hairy, it looks like <laughs> they got a little bit. Does look a little bit like Justin. <laughs> that's uh, my hair shirt. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, uh, hair shirt was an NPC that uh, uh, Fox and Ben and Becky met in the chain of dogs. Oh, yeah, he was he was a medic uh, that that was having those punitive mm. measures, you know, applied to himself. But yeah, that's that's my favorite NPC name so far is hair shirt. <laughs> Well, they call. I mean, hair, so hair shirts are a real thing. Like that was a yeah. that was a thing that did a lot of monks, you know, that and silly but, spells and things like that. But um, the name hair shirt or whatever. Well, so he was one of the crow blinders, though. So they gave him. Everybody else gave him that nickname because he was fucking stupid enough to wear a hair shirt, you know. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, it sounds it sounds more silly than it is because you know a hair shirt was a real thing, and most people yeah. don't know that. Anyways, uh, Sarah, though, seeing that you know with the, with the fear finally dropping, uh, kind of rushing uh, on the uh, you. We're on the broom. I'll say that you were still on the broom, that you didn't, you know, lose grip of it and fall or anything. Um, 
but you flying forward as, as fast as you can, just just throwing firebolt after firebolt at the body, uh, still surrounded in the cage. Um, they do manage to impact though, and and are kind of uh, burning where the where the wounds are, which are just dozens. She's just covered in bleeding spouts at this point. Hey, Norak, you want to just cut her head off for a good measure? You want to keep it? Don't Nazim you? might Nazim <laughs> might like it as a little trophy. You're wasting okay. perfectly good skin. We're not wasting it. Well, you There's can do that yourself. To go around. Look how big this thing is, and it stretches too. You can make like some nice socks. Or some like under breeches, you know, to get that elasticity, elastic band with that stretchy skin. Pogo gets it. Finger guns to Pogo. Finger <laughs> guns. Finger guns right back. <laughs> that is just creepy. Hey, Are there any on. alchemic uh, ingredients? Uh, as far as the. Bu- give me a nature check, Fox. Nature or medicine. I'll let you do either one because actually, since you got medicine proficiency, that would be. Potentially effective as well. I'd like to oh, I have the body half for proficiency for medicine, but I have a better model. So let's try that. Okay, sure. All right. Um, you do know that the blood from a hag can be useful. Um, you expect that this is a, a hag. This is uh, this is a th- fake this, creature, right? It is yeah, a fake creature, that and that blood will be worth something. You can use yeah, it to make other um, things. And you guys, you guys know what a Baba Yaga is? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, so so hags, when they get to a certain age, uh, B- Baba Yaga in the real world is a, is a I think it's a Russian uh, mm-hmm. uh, cryptozoological creature. Um, it's, it's basically this. It's a, it's a hag that lives in the woods. But basically hags, when they live long enough, they, they kind of evolve into you know, the, a larger, scarier, more powerful version of, of the regular ones. And this yeah, is sure. a Baba Yaga, essentially. Uh, but anyways, it's a very powerful hag's blood, um, which is a fake creature, yes. Um, so that would be useful. Her claws can be useful because they, they will retain their sharpness forever. You combine that with a little bit of uh, okay. uh, mermaid blood and you've got a great lubricant. Sexually. <laughs> as opposed to industrial lubricant <laughs> uh, I'm going to grab the claws and then I'm going to um, are there any keys does blood. it have any keys for like it's home maybe there's something in this home uh, well she's still in a cage you guys can't really get into the cage oh I'm going to go in the cage okay well when we can <laughs> I will grab the I, I will extricate the claws to make like a weapon out of them and okay. then um, I will uh, also grab some of the blood okay um, I'm gonna oh, also fill bad. my. I need your blood. I'm gonna fill my jar up with blood because I need blood too. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious if that's what you were gonna. If that's why you were asking. I'll take some blood, and yeah. uh, he, you can have some skin. What parts of the skin do you want? I'm really not good at like removing skin. I've tried before. I always make a mess of things. I'll take care of that. Do you want to drop your cool little neat thing, or do we keep this up? I mean, we're, we're filleting her and bleeding her dry now, so I don't know if she's coming back. Norak, you cutting the head off this beastie? Yeah. I'll give it a good smash. Are you going to drop the, the cage? Coming back is making me happy right now. <laughs> Are you going to drop the cage or are you going to leave the cage up? Yeah, I'm dropping the cage. I'll keep okay. vicious mockery on, on backup in case something happens weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, the cage drops. It, Oh, that's okay. That's something that must have changed. That's why I keep accidentally rolling it as people is the deselection thing is turned off. Oh, because I keep yeah. Like if I click somebody, I can't just deselect. It's one of the options, so it must have reset the. Yeah, one it's of the, the one options. where you can click, and all you have to do is click off of. The yeah, exactly. Well, it, used to, it wasn't add-on before, but when they um, it was rolled into core in I think seven zero point seven point eight or something mm-hmm. like that, one of the earlier versions uh, or more recent ones rather. But um, it must be it was an option you had to turn on, so maybe it got the option got reset. What or it is is yeah, it's hard to know because it looks like it deselects, but you still have all the stuff in the top left. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And I keep rolling as other people. Like, I just rolled that 88 as Sarah instead of rolling it as myself. Um, <laughs> not that it matters, but uh, the cage drops, and there is, the, 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 as soon as the cage disappears, where she had kind of been leaning against the you know internal horizontal bars of this, the body just, just falls forward and splashes into the mud right at Norok's feet. Um, and Norok, uh, as you're kind of standing there beginning to, to bring the sword down to take the head off, uh, you see that the neck tilt back slightly and the jaw begins to open and the teeth are just <laughs> barely resting against your, your ankle. Can I, can I roll for my... I was, I was keeping yeah, go ahead. just mockery yep. on, uh, yep. on, on lock. The regeneration is very slow and she's not like able to physically just move just yet, but she rolled high enough, so that was that's what that 88 was for. <laughs> Uh, it's not like a uh, she needs to do a 17, 17 wisdom save. Yeah. Right. Did, 
did the burning not take care of it when Seraphina hit it with the fire, fireball? So that's that's one of the differences between the hags and the trolls. So oh. the burning burning will keep them from generating for the next round. So um, <laughs> you're, you are the ugliest thing I've ever seen, and I've seen dead bodies before. And then I'm just gonna give her a little bit of psychic damage. Cut her head off! The the, 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 the eyes kind off. of kind of glimmer, you know, glimmer out again, and the teeth are still just resting against like Norok's foot, like teeth just just uh, you know, oh, laying basically laying on his left foot with the teeth like resting against his ankle, the upper jaw. Would someone cut her head off, please? <laughs> I'm going to. Okay. All right. But, uh, uh, Go I'm ahead. actually like I'm close to I'm I'm like right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you're curious, I'm, I am not. I, I think it's over. So I would have come very close to the bottom. Sure. All right. Uh, I would say this is well below the passive. Nork yeah. has a lot of expertise with taking heads off of things. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so you you manage to, uh, to to take her head off. She does not seem to be regrowing or recuperating in any way. Um, Kick it to the sides. <laughs> Kick it away. Uh, uh, Fox, did you make a check or did you make a check for the medicine check that you made? Was that for yeah, that was to see if she had it. Okay, go ahead and give me a sleight of hand, Fox, or medicine. You can choose either one uh, for extra care for extracting blood and taking the you know cutting the fingertips off to get the nails. Okay. Okay. Uh, easily, nice. you're managed to get both of those. Uh, you have three empty vials, I think. So you have you can fill all three if you choose, as well uh, as filling uh, uh, Pogo's jar for him if you want. Sure. Okay. All right. Then you fill three vials full of the phase blood, uh, the the uh, Baba Yaga or Bure, uh hag blood. Um, as well as taking the ten fingertips. Awesome. Um, and with that, then, uh, Sarah, for the sake of time, I guess, because we're we're at time here. Um, there's no shit. There's no audible mechanism or anything that tells you when you get a response. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, in, so, so that you have time to plan before next week or whatever, that the next time that you do check it, because you said you're checking it every hour anyway, so if you would be checking it again anytime soon, there is a response that gives you some glimmer of hope. Uh, the response says that that he'll be sending Kamazoth to help, and he'll meet you there. Uh, meet you there. Let's see from where he's coming from. It would be in six hours ish. All right, that actually works because she would have checked while they were harvesting stuff. So okay, that's fair. All right, so then you got that message that Kamazoth will be coming to help. Uh, you remember who that is and what that is and everything. Yep. Okay. Um, you also do know that. Uh, I'll say it this way: you personally are able to cast spells through uh, Noctua at a decent distance. Um, a creature as old as the one that you're sending the information back and forth to with that scroll likely has an increased distance and you guess that that's probably why he would be sending something in his stead does that make sense you understand where i'm going with that yes because you do i mean if you know who kamazoth is you understand what i'm, I'm saying also there, right? fully yeah. understanding this conversation i mean you have <laughs> with with some dm you know awareness you you would probably understand that too mm -hmm. uh, especially if you remember who kamazoth is all I of you guys uh, it was the big bat that uh they oh, dropped yeah, off yeah, books yeah. a few times uh, yeah. and has come back and you guys fed it a couple times, things like that. Um, so anyways, knowing that where Kamazoth is coming from and who he's attached to, you at least expect that you probably could get some assistance through Kamazoth, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Uh, so uh, next week then is the 20th. Everybody good for the 20th? Yep. Uh, d -b -d -b -d -b -d -b yes, I believe yeah, I am. I think so. Cool. Fox? Mm-hmm. All right, then I'll see you all next week. All right, see you guys. Have a good Not one. Everybody. Good night. Good night.